You know I get a lot of flack A lot And a lot of people get mad at me when I talk They be hating And I understand why Cause I'ma keep it 100 on uh, Cause I look you in your eyes I tell you truth with no lies I'ma keep it when They got something to say I look you in your face Then I put you in your place I'ma keep it 100 on uh, I'm not an OJ's backstabber Just a realist sticking on my facts grabber Oh, I see the fear in the people's eyes That's why I'm breaking down the science on this genocide Listen, they claiming black lives matter, right? Well, I'ma tell you that this bull and I tell you why Cause whenever you hear that set from another side Then every day in black communities be on the sides huh? Look at these kids, yo, they traumatized Cause whenever they see the cops, yo, they running high And then they turn the TV on, they get undermined And then you give them a Bible, they read a hundred lies I want them to function like a real man But you ain't even got a clue about the real plans Secretly, they need to keep them in the fields, man That's why I'm killing the game, cause I'ma keep it going, honey uh, Cause I look you in your eyes I tell you truth and no lies I'ma keep it going, honey uh, Cause I'm a boss If I talk, I'ma walk real talk I'ma keep it going, honey uh, Cause I look you in your eyes I tell you truth and no lies I'ma keep it going, honey Got something to say I look you in your face Then I put you in your place I'ma keep it going, honey uh, They claiming racism dead, yo But when we trip about it Say it's in our head, though But then we listen to the news And hip-hop Freddie Gray I mean we ducking and dodging this
I don't tell nobody Cause, cause I be on that real shit I be on that knowledge I be on that wisdom I be back on that college Get it on the For cancer patients, they silently killing you while you were sleeping. They pump you with more of it while you sedated. Food that you eat is contaminated. You killing yourself at the moment you ate it. Conspiracy theories that I be so privy to give you these lyrics is highly debated. How could you hate it? How could you fake it? Ooh, I'm glad I'm not one of you. The truth is in front of you. Get you decided, no turning your back. So how do I come at you? How do I teach you? Grab your attention and program your mind for masses and bitches. Wake the fuck up. You out of the mistress with liquid your soul from out of his prisons. Yes, he's the enemy. Of course, you know he likes a division. White against black and black against white and soul. On television, you need to make a decision Cause freedom of spirit is why you were living You need to be careful, he's coming for you Your wife and your children You think it's a game, don't you? You thinking these devils are playing, don't you? You think I'm insane, don't you? You thinking I'm sick in my brain, don't you? Well, I'm gonna hunt in secrecy like the Illuminati To tell the truth, now who gon' stop me? Cause I be on that real shit I be on that knowledge I be on that wisdom I be on that galaxy Podcast. 
lit conversations, debates, and advice that keep you turned up. What's up? What's up? What's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to the High Power Podcast, where we keep it real, and they call me the queen maker. I teach women how to shift the power dynamics in their relationships, right? And I put the woman back in her divine position, right? So it's Saturday night, and you know what we do on Saturday nights, power players? We have guests on Saturday night. Now, for those of you who don't know who I am, you might think I invite people here. I don't invite people here, because I'm going to tell you right now, men invite themselves here. Why do they invite themselves here? Men invite themselves here because they want to disprove or try to challenge me on my teachings to women. I don't invite men here because I don't care what men think. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but they care what I think, right? And they want to show that what I'm talking about is wrong. So because I don't invite them here and they invite themselves here, which I don't have a problem with them inviting themselves here, but if I don't tolerate certain things here. And one of the things that I do not tolerate is deflection, right? Because you are trying to come here to understand or get an understanding or disprove what I talk about. So because of that, I'm really not trying to hear your side or how you feel. I don't care about how you feel. The only thing I want you to do is to bring me facts to show that I'm wrong, right? And so because you need to bring me facts, whoever comes here, I will not tolerate deflection. I will not tolerate gaslighting, all right? This is a woman's podcast. This is my show. And this is my domain. And this is where I live at. And I'm here for women. And men have a million podcasts. As a matter of fact, they got four, four million and two podcasts, right? This is like the 90s or early 2000s where everybody had a studio in their apartment, right? Everybody was rapping. Everybody got a suit. So they got four men have four million and two podcasts. I counted them. Okay. And women only got two. Me and Cynthia G. <laughs> okay. Me and Cynthia G. Actually, maybe three. Uh, Tanya TKO. Okay. It's three of us out here up against four million and two. So since it's only three of us out here and y'all got four million and two podcasts that y'all can go to. What I'm going to tell you to do is if you want to whine, cry, and complain about how you feel about women, you got four million and two places that you can go. But when you come in here, you get down, and I don't care how you feel, because it's about, it's about us women, right? And you will not deflect and blame women for anything here. You can do that in four million and two other places. Now, with that being said, I have a guest tonight. His name is J.D. Carl. He invited himself here. I don't, I can't even remember where he came from. I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't know him before I started doing YouTube. And he just popped up out of nowhere. And now he on the show, okay? And so uh, he's been, uh, he's been a gentleman. He's been in here a couple times, all right? And I spoke to him um, before the show started. He seems to be level-headed. Uh, I got word that he's a pastor. So we're going to see how this is going to turn out. Now, um, I hate to tell you, though, <laughs> you are in the devil's den, Pastor J.D. Cottle. <laughs> this preacher Paulist sister-in-law, <laughs> okay? All right? Evil is good. That's where we at. That's where you at, Pastor. But let me go ahead and bring him into the show. This is going to be lovely. All right. How you doing, JD? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. I can hear you very Excellent. well. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So everybody, right. everybody, this is JD. Last time, a couple shows ago, we had um, 
the great value version of Genuine, okay? And now we got Chris Tucker, a uh, long lost sibling here, okay? So um, he didn't do well in comedy, so he decided to go into the church. Tell him, <laughs> <laughs> give him a little background. <laughs> Facts, yo. <laughs> I get that a lot, actually. You know, everywhere I've been on YouTube, I get the same reaction. Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker. So I'm used to it. I expected it, so that's what's up. Mm. But, yo, just a little bit about myself. I am a pastor, so uh, I did cover myself before I came home. So we good over here. I got the Holy Ghost for real. And I ain't talking about speaking in tongues. You feel me? Okay. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit about my channel. Uh, I advocate for uh, the men and trying to get men to be better versions of themselves and also talk about issues that men uh, frequently don't like to talk about openly in public, right? So uh, we talk about that. We do uh, sometimes talk about aspects of the Bible. However, we uh, don't focus on that. We're talking real life things because people are going through real life, uh, real life things. And the ultimate goal of my channel is to have more two-parent households, right? So we're trying to find out what the disconnect is between men and women so that we can come back together and have strong communities. And, uh, yo, shout out to Princella, right? Because I love what she's doing over here. Matter of fact, a lot of the things that uh, you say, Priscilla, I kind of agree with some of it, right? But, uh, you know, it's a couple of things here and there. I think I could uh, give a little bit more clarification uh, from the male perspective with somebody who uh, doesn't just regurgitate talking points that they've heard from somebody else. Uh, somebody else, uh, somebody that is uh, well read, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, has a level head and, you know, try to use a a uh, balanced perspective right mm -hmm. so uh yeah that's what i'm here for so shout out to you for uh allowing me to come up on your platform and speak with you for a few moments i sure appreciate it jd all right so uh everybody knows why i'm here right my objective is not to bring <laughs> families together as a matter of fact my objective is ultimately to to break them up right because most of them are toxic right and they are being held together at the detriment of the woman. So my ultimate objective is to destroy them and, and bring them down and, and put them back together in divine order, not the order that it is currently in. Right. So what I do here I, I, in the back in, uh, in the green room before the show started, you stated that um, you hold both men and women accountable, right? Um, I don't roll like that. I don't hold men accountable for nothing. I hold women 100% accountable for their happiness and their life. I don't care what men do. I don't care if men live on the streets. I don't care if he ever becomes successful. I don't care if he gets his passport and leaves because his life is not a woman's responsibility. And the days of women being responsible for what men do is over. So what I do here is I analyze male behavior, their psychology, and who they are at the core. And I teach women who men are at the core. And I show them that men are incapable of love so that women can stop investing all of their emotions, their hopes, and their desires in men with the intent on getting something back that he is incapable of giving. So when she releases her obligation to a man, and her mental sacrifice to him, then and only then can she become the best version of herself. So I don't hold men accountable for anything. I just analyze who they are and I tell her to go her own way and to break up any family that's toxic and destroying her, everything about her. That's what I do. 
So now that we know what, we, what each other does, now we can start this show. Where do you want to start, J.D.? I would like to start with uh, your, your talking point of uh, exactly what the title is. You, you say that men are incapable of love. I respectfully disagree with that. And the reason why I disagree with that is because um, I think that in your book, um, The Five Components of Love, right? Mm -hmm. You say the first component is understanding. Correct. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're, you're saying that the first men can't understand because they lack empathy. Is no. Correct? No. They can't understand because they don't want to listen to anything a woman says. Not a single thing. Now, you missed a show that I did a couple of days ago. There was a mm. po there was a post that men put put up that's going viral. And it's a series of memes to tell a story about, quote unquote, men's lives. And they basically in this picture, they depicted that. They get the short end of the stick that they sacrifice their life and they do everything that a woman asked them to do. Right. And then when he come in from work, she nagging. Right. They in this story, three memes out of this story, the quote unquote nagging that the woman was doing. She had no words coming out of her mouth, just an expression to show that she was nagging, which showed that he wasn't listening to a single thing that came out of her mouth. Not a single thing. But then when it came to him justifying why he feels like that towards the end, then he put words in her mouth that, quote unquote, were sabotaging him. He did not put words in her mouth where she was voicing legitimate concerns about her. Men do not listen to women. They do not listen to women's cries. They do not listen to women's complaints. They don't listen to anything that a woman says. And you know why he doesn't? Because he's self-centered. And everything in his mind revolves around him, his feelings, and what he wants. Anytime a man approaches a woman and he think he's flirting with her and he trying to shoot his shot, he don't shoot his shot based on what he can do for her. He shoot his shot on based on what she can do for him. You going to cook for me? I, I, I'm serious. I had a dude that I just, I, when I was on dating sites, dude called himself, quote unquote, flirting with me. Trying to act like we was going to be, the, the, you know, meet up and stuff. But what, he, what was he, how was his flirting go? So you going to cook for me? You going to do this? I need this. This what I need out of a woman. Woman, woman. Men look to use women for their own benefit because they are self-centered. Now, women constantly say this. And every woman in my show or in the comments section will tell you that men don't listen to them. But instead of men hearing what women say, they go back to talk about themselves. Disregarding every complaint that a woman has. You cannot love what you don't understand. You can't love what you don't actively listen to. You can't love something when it's all about you. And you can't even move your ego out the way to consider somebody else's feelings. Now, I, I disagree with that because uh, I'll just be honest with you. Nine times out of ten, if a woman is nagging, I'm, I'm not going to listen either. And the reason because the, the, the reason because is. You, it's a way to talk to people to get them uh, to understand. But if you already coming at me with uh, some negative energy or whatever, even whether it's negative or not, we ought to be able to sit down and talk about it, right? Instead of when I get home from work, I don't want to hear a lot of nagging and complaining, right? Because I hear that kind of stuff all day long, right? It's all about, right. It's all but about it, you, J.D. Yeah. Yeah, but listen, but listen, let, let, let me cook a little bit here. Now, after all of that, do you think that it's better for a woman to nag or to sit down and have a conversation? Oh, we tried that. 
We tried that. We tried it. No, we tried in every way. You can't tell me. I've dealt with men for 24 years, okay? Ain't no talking to y'all. Even this guy that was on my Facebook page that I ended up blocking a couple years ago. His name, he, forget his name. He used to, he used to spam my comment section with eight things that a woman need to do. And one of those eight things was to shut her mouth. Keep your mouth closed, right? Go talk to your friends. Don't talk to me. If you want to get, this is how men do. And see, here's the thing. Even with me sitting up here telling you about women's side, you're going to sit here and disagree and talk about you. And then you already admit, you're right, I won't listen either. You can't love that which you do not understand, and you can't understand that which you don't listen to. Like I said, men are incapable of love. They are. Because it's all about you and what you want. Well, I didn't work. Well, wait a minute. Let me tell you something. Women work outside the house. They run your errands. They take care of your kids. They do everything. And you want, you know what? Y'all work a nine to five. And you act like you done built the whole doggone world when women carrying everything on their back. And if she say anything, you go back to you. It's all about you. That's okay. It can be all about you. Because what I'm doing for women is I'm making it all about her and I'm releasing the guilt. I'm releasing anything that is binding her to a man mentally. So you don't have to listen to her. You ain't got to listen to a single word that she say. That's where I'm taking her because this stuff that we y'all we ain't dealing with that no more. Y'all can have your podcast. I'm never going to go to to no no male podcast because I really don't care what y'all talking about. Honestly, I don't care if you succeed. I don't care if you fail. I don't care if you have anywhere to stay. I don't care at all. You ain't got to listen to nothing we say. And see, here's the thing about it, uh, Priscilla. If men are sitting here saying we want steak and women keep trying to give us salmon, we, we don't want that, right? <laughs> men, men want somebody that can come up, right, and talk about things in a uh, not so much lo logical manner, but you know just as well as I do you get more uh, bees with honey than you do vinegar. A lot of times it's all about the way you talk to a man, right? You can, a woman can talk to a man in a way that will make him want to get out there and move the world. And I don't know what kind of men you were talking about, but my woman doesn't care. I'm talking about you alone. too, because you doing my, exactly. My, I don't you know, care about woman, your I don't care about your woman. I'm talking about what you're doing already on my show. You already, before no. two minutes in, two minutes in, you did exactly what all men do. And you're steady sitting here. You don't even, you do not even hear yourself. We men, oh, what, oh, okay, all right. It's all about what y'all want, right? We want this. Y'all use women. It's all about what you want. Never have I heard a guy talk about what he wants to do for a woman. It's all about what you want. <laughs> hey, 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 listen, I'm telling you, I don't care what you want because I ain't trying to give it to you. I'm not. I'm, and these what I'm trying to teach women is do not even concern yourself with getting in relationships with these dudes because all they want to do is use you. You got to change, walk on eggshells and do everything to benefit him. But he ain't trying to change nothing about himself to acquiesce to you. It's all about you bending, folding, breaking, bending, whatever to uh, to. To wrap yourself around what he do. Well, you, I don't need you to talk like this. You need to talk a certain way for me to listen. Maybe if you if you stand on my left side, maybe I hear you better. Uh-uh. No, we ain't finna do that. And, and that's why you're not gonna really get an argument or a conversation out of me. Because I really don't care what y'all do. Because I'm not, I'm not teaching these women to break their necks for you. And to... To, to toe the line and to tiptoe around your ego because all you have done as soon as you started talking was about what y'all want. I don't care what y'all want. We care too much. 
And every time a woman care what y'all want, y'all suck her dry and she don't get nothing out of it. And then you tell her she chose the wrong one when all of y'all are the wrong one. Every last one of you dudes that then came on here do the same exact thing. You talk the same way. But you'll tell everybody that you're the exception of the rule. Every last dude that they came on here has made himself the exception to the rule. Every last one of y'all. Well, I, I don't I don't make myself the exception to the rule or to anything because everything that I talk, I back it up 100%, right? I don't believe that women should carry the brunt of the load, and that's what I do in, in mine, right? I carry the brunt of the load because I understand, and the men that I deal with, and the men that I uh, uh, that, that are in my circle understand the pressure is made uh, for the men and not the women, right? So in a sense, nobody gets if, if what you're saying if what you're saying is true. In that case, nobody gets anything out of the deal because men want something because they provide something, right? Women should be able to offer something. Uh, sir, that's and, not and, that's and, not and, love. And, and, Lo sir, that's not love. Man. That's transaction. See, that's transaction. Love is not transaction. And like I said, you are incapable of love. And you're steady proving it by talking about transaction and what you want. That is ego driven power talk. That is not love talk. So you disagree with me talking about you're capable of love, but you're sitting up here going anti love. You are incapable of love. Y'all are only capable of transaction and self-preservation. You are only capable of operating within the laws of self-preservation. Y'all can't get out of it because y'all are so y'all are so stuck in your lower nature. You need somebody to cater and do something for you to fulfill your needs because y'all can't fulfill your own needs. So you look for women to use to fulfill them. And here's the thing. Women don't need y'all. These women are going to buy their own houses. They get their own cars. And guess what? When they start loving themselves because y'all incapable of love, she was looking for you for love and you can't get her that. But and you didn't give her that. But the reason you didn't give it to her because you can't give it to her. And when she realized that you can't give it to her and she starts to love herself, she really ain't going to need y'all. She really ain't going to need you then. You can't do nothing for a woman but bring her headaches and try to get her to stop being the best version of herself so y'all can feel like men. Because you don't man, feel like that, a man by yourself. That's not, that's not true. It, it's, it, it's not true. It is simply not true. And the reason why I say... Prove it. Is, the reason why I say it's not true is because in the same way that you you're teaching women not to uh, deal not to deal with men at all, right? Focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. Why is it that women are still saying that they want men? No, because men they're are they're just, un men because are just. Let me, let me let me let me cook for just a second. Okay. Men, men, if you ask uh, the majority of men. The majority of men want to be married and want families, right? Wait a minute. That's anti that's anti that's anti Andrew Tate. That's anti Kevin Samuels. That's anti Red Pill. That's anti no, that, that, ma'am, that, that's not true. And I, I don't claim myself to be red pill. It ain't about what you claim. See, this is the part that you don't get. Y'all are so self-centered that you really think the world revolves around you and your thinking. So just y'all, this how y'all sound. If I say statistically, it's 70, the jails are filled with 70% men and 30% women. Here y'all go. That ain't true. That ain't true because I ain't never been to jail. I have never spent the day in prison. This is how the world don't revolve around you. And I don't care about your individual life. OK, I don't care if you individually ever smoked crack. It's still motherfuckers out here smoking crack. Just because you ain't smoke crack, right? So just because you are, so here's the thing. Just because you individually don't represent some part of a statistic does not mean that the majority still exists or don't exist, right? So 
your inability to take yourself out of the equation is very revealing. The very fact that you can't do that shows how ego driven and self-centered you are. So when you approach a woman, you're still in that self-centered mentality and y'all cannot get out of it to save your life. Oh, I disagree with that. I'm, I respectfully disagree with that. I already know it's going to come out your mouth, right? Because <laughs> it came out your mouth three times already. Right. But even though you don't have nothing to back that up, you're still going to say it. Right. And no matter how many women in here telling you their experiences, no matter how many statistics come out showing you how men are unalive in women, unalive in kids. Right. And they're defunct and they running over women. No matter how many times that's shown, you still go. I ain't never did that. And then you sit up here and say that y'all capable of love and you can't even capable. Not, of love. That, that's not the majority. Sir, it is the majority. The majority, no, the majority of people are trapped in their lower nature, especially men. Okay, because guess what? It requires self-discipline right. to excel. Whoa, 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 whoa! It requires going against one's nature. Men do not want to go against their nature because it's too much work. Right? Hence, why they blame women for getting for her getting pregnant. Even though he made the decision to go in her raw and bust in her raw. The first thing people will say, did you make him wear a condom? It's her fault that he on child support, but not, not his actions. He can't control his thoughts. He can't control his sexual urges. He can't control his anger. But to talk about being the exception to the rule, baby, to be the exception, you've got to have self-control. Something that the average male does not have and don't want to have. He don't want to have it. So your, your conversation as a man, you ain't got no business talking about no women. Women should not be in your mouth. Because I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what y'all do. I don't care at all. I don't got to hold you accountable. I'm not holding you accountable. I'm telling these women to let you be. Let boys be boys and turn your back. If he fail, he fail. If he win, he win. But he going to win on his own efforts and he ain't going to win on your back. Don't let these dudes move in with you. Don't buy them nothing. Don't speak no life into them. Don't do nothing. Let him stand on his own. Now, see, I, I, I agree with you at I would never tell a man to move in with a woman. That is one of the biggest mistakes ever on both sides, right? We're not even going to go there. But the fact of the matter is when men come up and, and, and be what they are on their own, they're not doing it off the back of a, of a woman. Those are the type of men that I tell women not to deal with, right? And that's not the majority. Whether it's not whether or not it's average or not, it's still not the majority. Sir, do you understand what then, average is? No, no, no. You yes, ain't gonna I know, go. No, I know no. Well right, 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 right. That means yeah. it's the major. You do realize that average is the majority, right? Average is the majority. Right. The people listen. Average and below is the majority of any population, right? Average and below. Okay. The majority of people Men are. And li women. No, li listen. This is y'all problem. You can't keep a woman out your mouth. Let me tell you something. My platform is not designed to help men do a damn thing. My platform is designed to help women heal themselves. Get rid of childhood trauma. To learn to love themselves. That's and to learn men who they are so that they can focus on their personal growth. We don't talk about y'all, but y'all for some reason can't keep y'all's personal development strictly for men, right? You can't. You got to, well, it's both sides. See, you can't become a millionaire if you are, if your attention is divided in too many different places, right? You got to be able to focus all of your attention on one thing. Y'all can't do better because you're too busy worrying about what something, what a woman is doing. Stop talking to women and focus on yourselves because y'all are doing bad. Very bad. I had a woman, I had a woman on my Facebook post who follows me she ran into the great va great value version of genuine Khan Ali who was on my show 
who is a real estate agent, when he found out that she bought a house by herself as a single mother, he started to downgrade her, criticize her and everything, and tell her that she ain't got no business buying no house as a single woman, that she should have waited on a man to offer his provisions for her. Right? Be, you know why? Because men do not move. They do not elevate themselves. Kevin Samuels said... Are you a woman tired of getting the short end of the stick in relationships? Are you feeling frustrated, lost, and confused doing everything you've been told to do to get and keep a man, yet you still get used, abused, and drained? Or are you tired of people telling you what to do but not how to do it? Love yourself, know your worth, but no instructions on how? Then don't worry, because the five components of love will help you discover the secrets of true love and open your eyes to a world filled with delusions and short-term regretful relationships that can potentially ruin your life. Even if you're already engaged in a relationship and feel lost and unable to understand whether you're truly being valued or not, the five components of love will guide you toward a secure and healthy relationship, not only with others, but yourself most importantly. Remember, it's never too soon, never too late. You need to choose whatever makes you strong and happy. Visit our website to sign up for the Five Components of Love Workshop held every Sunday. All right, I totally forgot that I had that commercial going on. It was all good. That kind of threw me off there for a second. I was like, because I was looking at it, I was like, wait a minute. I was supposed to tell you that my commercial was going to come on, and then I got caught up in what I was saying and forgot. And I saw it like five minutes down to the, to the number, and then boom, right? But here's the thing. Kevin Samuel said it himself. When you talk, to, men don't want to hear their truth. They just don't, right? When you start talking to men, right, they don't move. As long as you're talking about and bashing women, that's all they want to hear, right? So with him telling, with, with them trying to lower women so that they can feel better and, and, do, and think that they're doing better, that's a detriment to men, right? Women do not need to stop their growth because men can't keep up. That's his damn problem. And I tell women, girl, focus on you and get your bag because the wealth, the true wealth is in sisterhoods. You got too many women out here in real estate, in technology, in, in uh, e-commerce and all other types of businesses that if you want to become a better version and you really want to get your bag and do everything, Hook up with your sisterhood. Stop looking for men to do something for you that they can't. Because men only get money so that they can control you and have some type of power over you. They don't get money so that they can have some type of actual relationship where they value you as a human being. That ain't why they're getting in no relationship with you. They want to control you. They want to subjugate you and make, have you stand next to him so that he can feel more man or look like more, more of a man to his peers, right? But it ain't actually to do anything for you, right? So the love that a woman is going to get is going to be from herself. It ain't going to be from no man. And the, the, the life that she really want of peace, happiness, where she can travel and really experience joy is also going to come from herself and the women that she's connected to. Y'all can't be good partners. You, can't, you don't have empathy. Y'all are not good relationship partners. So the only thing women need men for is labor. And guess what? We are willing to pay y'all for that. We willing to pay you to cut the grass. We willing to pay y'all to take out the trash. Whatever you have to do, we are willing to pay for that. But we don't need you in our house. We don't need to hug up on you. And we don't need, we don't need to deal with your headaches. We don't need to deal with none of that. And since y'all can't get it together, and the reason you can't get it together because you're too busy trying to split your doggone attention focusing on women, you need to stop talking about women and get y'all shit together. But y'all ain't going to do that. Y'all ain't going to do that. So the only people that's going to do it is women. And when women turn their back, that's when men going to get the message. That's when y'all going to get the picture. 
So that's all I got to say because I really ain't got nothing to argue with you. You know why? Because I really don't care what men think. There's nothing that you can say that's going to make me care, right? Because I already get, so like I told you at the beginning, I ain't trying to put no families back together. I'm trying to destroy them. Well, see, I am. I'm not trying to destroy families. And if you ask the majority of women, women will tell you that the, the majority of them will tell you that they want a man that can provide. They will tell you that they don't want to be responsible for uh, the majority of the household bills. They'll tell you that. Why, why did that? Is why it, is that? Why is that? Because there's a reason for that. Because, because yeah, because men have to produce. That's why. Uh, no, 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 men, no. Men should be producing. That's not. That's not why and though. If you're not producing. That's not why. Well, that's that's. I, I don't think. I think that's a, a very very good reason why. Because women always say they want a man with ambition, right? Mm -hmm. I teach men not to even worry about women until they have their stuff together. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have their stuff together, they need to leave women alone. We can agree with that. On the other hand, you are speaking of a, a section of women that want to be alone, and that's fine. No, I'm not. Well, women, it, 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 uh -uh. Are. No, I'm and, not. And that's fine. No, that's fine. I, no, no. But, See, that, yeah, that's well, not. Yeah, no, that's not. Said, because you, no. You no, 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 no. I'm. Women don't need a man. No, that, right? I, I'm telling them that they don't. I'm telling them that they don't. Do you know how many women in here are in relationships that they thought they needed to be in that are toxic? And it is me that's helping free them from these toxic, abusive, emotional, abusive relationships. It's women in here yeah. in relate. Listen, listen, that's it's women. Majority. Yes, it is. And, and not and not saying not saying that it doesn't happen because it absolutely does happen. But ma'am, what I'm saying is, is that that is not the you don't majority. you don't sir. Right. This this is why I know y'all incapable of love because y'all so stuck on your individual self that y'all are not listening to women. Do you yeah. not know? listen, sir, sir? No, I'm not gonna let you do that in my. Listen, it's several women in here disagreeing with you. All these women, all these women all over the globe. Do you not understand that it's it, for every five and a half hours? Every five and a half hours, a woman is unalive by you dudes. Do you know I know two dudes, two, who, who unalived women because they left them. I know them personally. One of them used to ride in my car. He ambushed that girl and took her life in 2014. Women, are, I, I, done been, I done had dudes hit me. Four different dudes put their hands on me because of their, uh, because of their jealousy. Do not sit up here and tell women what they experience when women keep talking. Women keep talking and y'all keep ignoring. And then you go sit up here and say that's not the majority when the majority keeps saying the shit about y'all. Ma'am, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen and that's terrible. Sure, you that's just said it ain't the majority, but it is. It's the majority keep talking no, no. to you. Ma'am, it's not the majority. It's not the majority. Sir, show me the because stats. Show me the stats because I'm about to get ready to put the stats on the board. I'm going to put the stats on the board about domestic violence and everything. If you don't show me no stats, you better not sit up here and tell me, no, no not the majority. Ma'am, men face domestic violence just as much Sir, as Sir, pull the statistics. Give me the numbers. I'll, I'll pull them. Now. I'll pull it. Now. I, I absolutely will. And I want to see yours too. I am. Now, and the, I and am. The reason, and the reason why, the reason why, I say that you're dealing with a sector of women that want to be left alone is because the majority of women and men want to be married and want to be in relationships. So what I'm trying to do is figure out what the disconnect is between the women that say that they want that and the men that they say that they want, right? And the, the issue is, is, is not that men aren't doing better men black men are doing just fine by the sir way. sir because, and the, and the average black man out earns the average black sir man. all i no. need you to do is pull statistics because i'm not gonna let you come here with opinion everything that you do man, i need you to opinion. no 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 i need stats give me the facts let me see them so i can put them on the screen for everybody to see hold on because i'm about to get my assistant to send me some stats so I can put mine on the board. Hold on.
Okay. All right. I'm getting some stats sent to me. It's lagging in my ear. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right. All right. So um, let me let me let me tell you why women, right, are talking about they want marriage. Because we ain't even 50 years, we're not even 50 years out of women being able to get a bank account, sir. Women were forced to need men at a time. They were forced. Which, when you force somebody to do something, that means it's anti-nature. That means it's anti-nature, right? That's the first thing. And they are homegrown under patriarchal philosophy that conditions them to marry to need, to think that they need men. And the stats show you 54% of divorced women do not want to remarry. So once they marry under the illusion or under the um, brainwashing and then they experience what marriage to y'all really is, they divorce you. 70% of women, 70% of divorces are filed by women. Because they experience the reality of being married to y'all. 97% of, uh, a 97% increase in the chance of divorce when men have minimal contribution to housework. Right? 90% of divorces are filed when the woman is college educated by women. So women have been sold bullshit about y'all since before she came out the womb. Then she tried with you, and if shit fell because of y'all, and then they, they decide they don't want to do it no more. Ma'am, women get divorced. Women file for divorce because their husband didn't want to go ice skating. Sir, do you want me to pull up the marriage stati the divorce statistic? Do you want me to pull that up too? Give me the send me the divorce statistic. Stat. I, I, send I, I, me the divorce statistic. Stat. I'm, I'm, I know se I know seventy to eighty percent of women file for divorce, but let's just say. Let, let's just say I'm gonna give you the reasons. I'm gonna pull let, up the let, stats. Let, let, let's, let's just say for for let's just say eighty percent of women file for divorce. If half of that is for the most egregious reason for for uh, domestic violence, uh, abuse, infidelity, whatever, that still means that you have sixty percent of women filing for divorce. For irreconcilable issues. I want y'all to see this, sir. What I got on here. See, I don't come to play. I don't all that all that yang yang you talking that ain't got no nothing to back it up. Hold on, hold on. It's yang yang because you ain't showed me no stats. But what I got yeah. on my board, what I got on my board, you can't see it because you're probably not looking at YouTube. You're probably just looking at your software, your streaming software. But right now oh, on you, okay. Right now you should see on the screen that I have 2022 divorce stats and explanations pulled up right here. This is 2022 divorce statistics, 115 studies, facts, and rates for 2022. Now, if you can't go and get me no stats about why women are divorcing, okay? I don't want to hear none of that yang yang you talking, but I'm going to read it to you from the stats of 2022. Let me hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah, okay. Let me turn this back on my face. All right. I tell you what, I'm going to just read all of them instead. I'm going I'm to read them from one. I'm going I'm to read them. I'm going to read them all, all the way down. It's 115. I'm not going to read all 115 because by the time I get to uh, probably the middle, I'm going to find it. I don't want to just have y'all holding in silence while I'm looking for a specific stat. So I'm just going to read practically everything they say here. Okay. In 2019. The marriage rate in the United States was 6.1 per 1,000 total population. Two, 
In the same year, the divorce rate was the U.S. is in the U.S. is 2.7 per 1,000 population, with 44 states and D.C. Uh, reporting. This is known as the crude divorce rate, although useful for describing changes in divorce rates over time. The crude divorce rate does not provide crude information on the percentage of first marriages that end in divorce. As of 2019, both marriage rates and divorce rates in the United States are decreasing, with the marriage rate dropping from 8.2 per 1,000 people in 2000 to 6.1, and the divorce rate from 4.0 in 2000 to 2.7. Recent studies have shown that millennials are choosing to wait longer to get married and staying married longer and are the main driver in the decline of both the marriage and divorce rate in the U.S. U.S. divorce rate per 1,000 married women. Currently, the divorce rate per 1,000 married women is 16.9. Many experts feel that this is a much more accurate measure of true divorce rate than the crude rate. Five, the divorce rate per 1,000 married women is nearly double that of 1960, but down from the all-time high of 22.6 in the early 1980s. Now, I want to pause right there. And I'm going to read that one more time because I need you to understand something, sir. The divorce rate per 1,000 married women is nearly double that of 1960. What couldn't a woman do in 1960? In 1960, sir, a woman could not have her own bank account unless she was married to a man. She also could not apply for any credit cards or any loans. Unless she was married to a man. Sir, that is force. That is force. That is unnatural. But what happened in 1974? The 1974 act, the credit act, made it illegal to deny women credit. So, in 1960, or in, in the early 1980s, the all-time highest divorce rate in the early 1980s, shortly after women was able to get credit, was 22.6. That tells you that when men had power and complete power and control over women, they did something that made women want to leave you. Because as soon as a woman got the opportunity and the right to not have her life attached to you, she left. 22.6 in the early 1980s when she got freedom. Almost 50% of all divorces in the United States will, uh, marriages will end in divorce or separation. Researchers estimate that 41% of all first marriages end in divorce. 60% of second marriages end in divorce. 73% of all third marriages end in divorce. You know why that is? Right? Yeah, because of feminism and women are more... Ah, you got an excuse, right? Because you think, right? No, that, no, 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 no. Because you think number five should have never happened. You think because the feminism, it's right? No, 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 no. Yes, it is. Because you just... You just no. Sir, you just blame feminism, but number five, number five said that the divorce rate reached its all time high in the early 1980s. So the reason for that is, is because men was doing something to women that made them want to leave. And now you say feminism, which means that you don't think that women should have had the right to be free, that they should have been. Not true. That's yeah. Not true. Yeah. Because no, the not. whole the whole. The whole issue with feminism was women getting their rights. Not, ma'am. Cosmopolitan magazine sold women a bunch of garbage, right? And if you go back and look at and look at the uh, interview of the woman who created Cosmopolitan magazine, she'll tell you that they sold women a lie. 
and it's because women uh, women are more sexually free. If you look at the statistics, women that are more promiscuous have a less chance of having sir, a successful uh, sir, marriage. Sir, 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 and let me tell you what a successful marriage is, right? From, from y'all's point of view, is being able to have her mind wrapped around you. See, That's free? No, 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 no. Yes, it is. Because here's oh, the thing. Right. Sir, yes, it is because a free person a person who experiences freedom will never return to slavery. Do you understand that? So, yeah, let, 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 yes, it is. So let me tell you, no, sir, sir. Yes, it is. Now you're going to sit up here and tell women how they feel in marriages. You're going to tell us that the energy that we put in day in and day out that y'all don't give two fucks about, right? Cooking, cleaning, Doing all the housework, going outside the house, catering to y'all insecurities, stroking your ego, walking on eggshells. You mean to tell me that that is not slave labor, that we don't get tired. We don't get tired. We don't have emotions. We don't have feelings just like it. you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no, you no, did. No, no, Listen, no, I, I didn't you're, say saying you're saying that you're saying that because you said it at the beginning that women got to walk on eggshells with y'all because I don't want to hear all that nagging because you just I didn't say I didn't you're, say walk on eggshells. Yes, you did. Because see, here's no. the thing. Walking on eggshells means that we can't express ourselves the way we need to express ourselves because you are so concerned about how the message is coming to you. Well, y'all know we y'all got to say stuff a certain way for sir. That's walking on eggshells. And here's the thing. I don't teach women to walk on no damn eggshells with y'all. You don't appreciate shit they do. And then you're going to turn around and tell them that they energy that they're exerting that 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 you want them to exert for free or for a ring right for a ring is let me let me, let me you probably did i'm just going to replay i'm going to replay my my tiktok video before I, let me let me let me play my tiktok video real quick for the, for the people who might not um thank goodness i saved this cuz this was one of my most popular ones uh it's on instagram so i'm gonna pull that up real quick and i'm just going to let people see this right I'm going I'm to let you see it. Okay. Oh, where's my page? And here we go. Oh, my gosh. Where is my, where is that video? Mm. I saved that video. Give me just, give me, give me two seconds. Oh no, no, give me a little bit more than two seconds. I want to pull this. I want to pull it up. Um, mm. I got that one on there. Let's see. Where is that other video? I'm just. Yeah, you know, they, they, they ban my TikTok, so I ain't got access to all my uh, videos, but it's the slave labor, my slave labor bi video. Yeah, so, yeah. Because I want people to see that if they didn't see it, right? Because I literally, I literally listed out all of the jobs that women are expected to do, right? And I'm gonna still finish these these stats, right? Okay. Yeah. I I I I'm I'm, I'm still gonna read these. Well, you can't care about them if you're not listening to their cries, sir. You, you can't care about them if you don't if you're continuing to dismiss what they're telling you about how they feel. Right. And, and, and the fact of the matter is the statistics show that women do the majority of the housework and they work outside of the home. Right. So um, it's I, I'm going to pull. I'm going to continue to read this. Right. But even with me reading the stats. OK. You're still going to dismiss what the numbers are showing. Even though the numbers back up what I'm talking about, right? So, once you experience freedom, a free person will never return to slavery. And let me tell you something. I teach women to be free in six areas. Mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, financial, and sexual. Men want to control the sexual freedom of women, right? 
because he wants to mentally have ob- mentally have control o- over her, right? So this is why they focus. That's a lie because that's all y'all talking about in these doggone streets. Like we got, we're not gonna, we, we're gonna forget about alpha male strategies. We're gonna forget about all these podcasts. I don't listen. To L- listen, here's the thing. This ain't about you, sir. At what point are you gonna realize that you gotta stop talking about you, right? This is why ain't no, ain't no ma'am because I'm telling you numbers. I'm telling you what's out here in the public. I'm telling you what women are going through. But see, this why this this is why I know what's out. I know exactly what's out there, right? And I, I'm not I'm not discrediting what women are going through at all because I know, like I said, it is some jacked up dudes out there that has done some messed up stuff to women, right? But what I'm trying to uh, convey to you and your audience is, is the fact that women have to take accountability of some things too. And I'm not just talking about women doing the work to make themselves better. I'm talking about men doing uh, the work to make themselves better so they can be better spouses, be- better leaders, better husbands. That means you got to focus in their, in their uh, community. So p- focus 100 percent. Here's the thing. Focus 100 percent of your attention on men and not women, because I got women. Don't worry about it, because let me tell you what accountability is. See, y'all. Want, no, 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 I'm not. Because y'all still want access to them, right? But I don't care about you wanting access to them. I don't care about if you, I don't care if your dick fall off because it dry rot. I don't care, okay? And I, I'm not going to tell women to cut themselves down to give you access because you need her. I don't care about that, okay? So let me tell you something, right? Let me tell you the difference between accountability and blame. See, y'all want to sit up here and blame the woman. I teach the woman to take accountability. And how I take, tell her to take accountability is to stop giving her power to you. Do not expect nothing out of a man. And you damn sure can't expect no love out of him because he ain't capable. So if you want your life to be better, you're going to have to take 100% control over every situation. And the only way you're going to take control of any situation is to take 100% accountability and responsibility for your happiness. That means you need to analyze the male of what he's capable and not capable of doing. And you need to understand that he is not capable of loving you. He ain't capable of listening to you. He is not capable of concerning himself about how you feel about nothing. So here's the thing. You concern yourself with you and you take the reins and you control the whole goddamn pie. The whole pie. Don't give him no control. None. So here's the thing. We don't care what you do, right? Y'all can bitch whine and complain about women all day. But here over here, I'm teaching women to connect with other women, get your bag up, get your health right, erase these traumas that you're dealing with, free yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, sexually, financially, and spiritually. That's it. That's it. That's it. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. And and she's doing that without men being a single thought in her mind. Not a shit stain in his drawers. She don't care. Right. So y'all can continue to focus on women. But I'm telling women to turn her back and focus on herself because the better choice, the better choice is herself. It ain't y'all because no matter who she choose, when y'all fuck over her, you're going to say it's her fault. So since it's always her fault and there's nothing that a man did wrong, that's right. It's her fault. You take 100 percent accountability and responsibility for this shit and you turn your back and you focus on you. Live your life, girl. Go buy you a house if you want to get in real estate. Go hook up. Buy your car. He can't buy you the car that you want. And if he do, he wants you to be a slave to him because he did. So here's the thing. You buy your own car. You want a Range Rover? Go buy it yourself. You want a house? Go buy it yourself. He can't do nothing for you. Nothing. Let him go. Let him. Whatever he going to do, let him. All this stuff he talking about, it don't matter. It don't matter. Turn your back and build yourself up, queens. And don't worry about what men are doing. If you want a baby, you have a baby because you want one. And if he walk away, it don't matter. Let him go. Yeah, your, your, your rhetoric, even though I do uh, agree with uh, a lot of what you say, your, your, your rhetoric is, is definitely dangerous. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because, because now, 
let me, let me just say this, and and we'll we'll probably, you know, just agree to disagree here, but the fact of the matter is that everybody wants companionship, and uh, at some point or another, right? What is companionship? And what is companionship? Most people most people want to be married. That's not companionship. That's not companionship. What is companionship? What is the definition it, it, of companionship? No, I'm serious. The, def the definition of companionship is to have somebody there, right? So, so that's not what, the definition. What, what, whether it's a uh, human, ma'am, a dog could be a companion. Right, you know friend, friend, a traveling buddy, yeah, right? Yeah, and guess what? Yeah, she right. ain't got to do that with an emotionally unavailable, a person that don't listen. You all are not good companions. Y'all are fuck yeah. tools. No, no, you're fuck tools. Pastor, <laughs> Pastor JD, you're fuck tools. You are not good companions. You don't listen to women. You can't be a woman's friend. A man can't be a woman's friend without the idea of positioning himself to hope he can get sex from her one day. Y'all are fuck tools. You're not friends. She gonna get her companionship from other women. Not y'all. And y'all have shown that for the last 50 goddamn years. Ma'am, and that, that's not true because, well... Women are probably more low down to women than, than anybody in our community is. And, and the, the fact of the matter is, you know, people can do whatever it is that they want to do. And if y'all want to be over there by yourself, then fine, y'all do that. But I teach men to leave women like that alone. They supposed to. Please go on your go find a pick me. We want you. I tell JD. I tell them. Listen. If a chick thinks she in competition with me, baby, you can have you can have this you can have this penis. You can have a penis, sir, ma'am. I don't care. I want y'all to go get pick me's, cause baby, everybody can't be a queen. Everybody can't be a queen. We need concubines and slaves. I ain't finna be your slave, so I'm gonna tell you to go right on over there to her. You, go on. You're absolutely right. Because if everybody's a queen, nobody is a queen, right? No, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's right. Ain't nobody queen. Everybody queen ain't nobody queen, right? And queens, queens don't bend over backwards, right? And give up all they value for no damn title. And they damn sure ain't finna be doing no slave labor because I'm not finna be getting up early in the morning folding your shit. I'm not finna be packing your lunch. I'm not gonna be kissing your, and I'm not gonna uh, kissing your ass and walking on eggshells. I'm not finna do that. And so if it's a chick out there that's willing to do that, baby girl, you have right on there to take this, take my lightweight, take my lightweight, girl, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess. But uh, let, let me let me ask you let me ask you one more question before I get up out of here. Are yeah. you are, are, are you saying that men are just supposed to accept uh, screaming, yelling, tearing them down, disrespect? Is that what you're saying, sir? That's because not that's not what all women do. And guess what? Let me tell you something. If you choose, well, the women the women that don't do that don't have that problem. Oh, actually, yes, they do because I don't do that. I don't do that. As a matter of fact, uh, I had dudes put their hands on me when I refused to argue with them. They didn't like the fact that I walked away from the argument. Y'all got control issues, right? Right? I had two dudes put, but no, four, I'm sorry. Four times, three different dudes, right, to do that shit, right? So, no, sir. No, sir, right? Let me tell you something. Testosterone triggers the amygdala, right? Y'all's emotion center. Do you know that women's emotional control center is larger than her amygdala? Did you know that? I'm going to prove you. Yeah. Okay, so that means women have more emotional control than men, which tells you that men are the emotional ones and not women. The only reason that women are acting any, in any way, shape, form, or fashion toxic, it is because of patriarchal philosophy. Patriarchal philosophy forced women to compete against each other for men by stripping their rights to provide for themselves and to commune. Women commune. This is the real reason that they outlawed polygyny so that they could have a divide and conquer tactic between women. That is not women's nature. It is men's nature to fight and compete against each other for women. That is not women's nature. So women are affected by patriarchal philosophy that poisoned them. And I'm shifting it back into its divine order. Because y'all out of order, and I don't care what you think. 
I'm trying to I'm trying to destroy any of these all toxic relationships where women are self-sacrificing and destroying themselves behind men who are selfish and who are all who the majority of them are infected with NPD. She will not sacrifice for y'all no more. And I don't care how you feel about it. Yourself. I don't care how y'all feel about it either. Well, that's good. Because that, at, at the end of the day, I, I'm i trying to put relationships back together, right? And, you know, apparently we got uh, two different um, two different uh, agendas here, and that's, that's cool. You mm -hmm. know, and, and I told you before, you know, at the end of the day, we are probably are going to just have to agree to disagree. And oh, I... I was already there before you got here. I told you at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. And I already knew, uh, you know, what you was about. So, and, and, and that's cool. But, you know, the but before I, I, I jump off, the, the issue is, is that there is uh, a sector of men, black men in particular, and I talk about black men because that's what I am, that, uh, definitely are doing better because I'd say 90% of the people that I'm around are, you know, entrepreneurs, have good jobs and things of that nature, have kids and are married and are in families and, and want to uh, build other families. And uh, we also uh, try to help other people, other men to try to do better because you're absolutely right. It is a lot of men out there that are trash, and I get it. I get it, but it's still not the majority. It's I disagree. Majority. I disagree because here's the thing. Here's the thing. The police department. The, the police department is corrupt, sir. <laughs> and it's majority men. I'm sorry. Uh, sex traffickers, right? Uh, we have sex trafficking because men cannot control themselves, so they want to get kidnap kids to have sex with them. So. Ain't nobody finna sit up here and tell me no cockamamie bullshit. It was an anesthesiologist, sir, that was sticking his dick in a woman's mouth unconscious. Don't tell me. And, and I teach women not to judge you based on your occupation because that's bullshit. Okay. Your occupation ain't your character, sir. So let me tell you something. It's, it's Ivy League. It's Ivy League blonde hair, blue eye guys right now that probably got 15 bodies under his damn uh, house right now. He's in the grocery store shopping right now, and everybody think he's just the best person, and he's starving. He got a little girl chained up in his basement right now. I don't want to hear the bullshit. I don't want to hear the bullshit. Did, did you hear about how women are... I don't want to hear... I don't want to hear the bullshit, sir. You're not going to... Sir, it's not I, you're not going to Man. deflect to women to, on my page when you just yeah, tried to yeah. say that... Listen, when you just sat up here and tried to say that 90% of the people that you deal with are business owners and all of that, which makes them so-called good men, sir, it don't. Money don't make you good. Your occupation don't make you good. Uh, sir, you, you just said... All of these descriptions, I'm taking everything that you said and I'm letting you know that none of that determines the, the type of person that you are psychologically or your character. So I teach women not to judge people based on appearance or occupation or any of that. Look through them. Look through them. Look down into the core of who they are. I don't want to hear none of that. Right? Because let me tell you something. I ain't never dated a Pookie and a Ray Ray. Never. All of the dudes that I dealt with has some professionalism about themselves, sir. So I don't want to hear that. I got experience with men. I know men better than they know themselves, and I don't care about your occupation. I don't care about your bank account. The only thing I care about is who you are deep down to the core, and I know how to look through you. Well, obviously, uh, I don't know what type of man that... Uh, yeah, that's what 100% of y'all dudes come on here and say. The dudes that call, all y'all say the same shit. I ain't trying to hear it. I'm serious. I'm just not trying to hear it. All of y'all are exceptions to the rule. Because all of you are exceptions to the rule. And, and here's the thing. Let any of these dudes that call, talk, all, there is no such thing as a below average man. All of y'all are exceptional. All of you. Every single one of these dudes that in my inbox, that call my yeah, show, that come here. All of you are exceptions to the rule, right? So 
ain't no rule, right? It, women are just delusional. We making up in our minds. You're right. We delusional, so we gonna stay in our little delusional world and not worry about what the hell y'all doing. Okay, and y'all keep staying by yourself. And we will. Those of us that want to be in a relationship and want to be married and want to work on ourselves, go that's ahead. What we're gonna do. Go that's ahead. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. But yo, thank you so much for having me. And uh, before I before I jump off this this last thing, I saw somebody in the comments say say something about my wife or whatever. Everything that I talk about on this platform that uh, you've graciously allowed me to come on to. Thank you again. Thank you. Everything that I say, everything that I say on my platform, I live it. And you can ask my wife, and you can tell, you can ask anybody else around me that I back up each and everything that I say. My woman, doesn't, my, my wife, my woman didn't have to carry the blunt, the brunt of the load because I carry it. If she wants to work, she can work. If she don't want to work, then I'm gonna hold it down and I'm gonna take care of it. And can right? she keep? Can she keep 100 percent of her money because it's hers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, and Absolutely. that ain't that, that ain't that ain't simple behavior, right? I wouldn't say it's simple behavior because the the reason why I say it's it's not simple behavior is because a man has to stand on his own regardless. We know that nobody's coming to save us if things go south. Right? But that, that's that's not true because they show sure want women to come save them. They I sure do. I, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't. Oh, that's right. You live in a bubble, and you don't. You don't. You don't care about. You you, you don't focus on right. So forget the forget all of the things that's going on in the world. We just gonna act like that shit don't exist. We don't act like homosexuals no, don't no, exist. No. We gonna act no, like we gonna we gonna act not. like we gonna act like men get with women and have jobs when they get with them. As soon as they get with them, then they quit their job and then don't want to do nothing. So them 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 dudes don't exist, huh? No, no, right? No, they, they absolutely exist. Right. So here's the thing. And, and if you if you get with a man that has a job and then he quits his job, you need to quit him immediately. But see, that's what. Here's the thing. I'm teaching women to do that because the Good. fact that here's the thing. Yeah, the fact that. the fa here I'm doing it, but you don't like it because guess what? That in, that means that the majority of these dudes ain't finna get chose. And here's the thing. They might have, yeah, it's easy to get crackhead pussy. Yeah, it's easy to go manipulate a little 18-year-old girl and try to take advantage of a girl that's in a uh, fucked up situation. Yeah, all that shit easy, right? But guess what? These women that these dudes really want, yeah, they ain't so easy, right? That's why men had their wives and then cheat on them with a bad bitch because that bitch don't give them shit. She treat him like the she treat him like he's supposed to be treated, and he chasing he love it too. He love that chase, right? Yeah, that's why I tell him, hey, baby, baby girl, if you want to cater to a dude, baby, take care of my lightweight. I'ma send I'ma send my clothes over there so you can wash them too. <laughs> yeah, wash my shit while you washing his. All right. Well, again, thank you so much. <laughs> you yeah, you're welcome, JD. Back. I appreciate I get, you coming here. Yeah, I gotta get you over on uh, on my show. I hope we can work it out sometime for uh, you to come over on my platform. Oh yeah, yeah, holler at me. Yeah, I'm gonna holler at you for sure. I'm gonna holler at you for sure. You know, we we agree to disagree, but uh, I promise you, you ain't seen the last of me yet. Okay. <laughs> All right, go All shop right. your iron, baby. <laughs> All right, I'm out. Y'all take care. Be All good. right, thanks. Thank All right. That's probably one of the quickest outside of Adrian. Can you can you turn that down? Yeah, that's probably one of the quickest ones I done had, right? I had I saw some dude talking. About, you talk about somebody in the somebody in the comment section. See, you talk about men being average and below, but that's all you qualify for, <laughs> sir. <laughs> You and your buddies ain't in my league, right? Right? Most of you have no education, right? I outperform you, sir. Who you think I qualify for? I, I'm overqualified for you guys. You don't qualify for me, sir. I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want nothing to do with you. I want you to go overseas. I want you to. Because I want you all up out my face. Right? Only reason you need to be out in my face is to give me that damn invoice for cutting my lawn. And and chances are you ain't going to give me no invoice if you black. The only person that's going to be walking up to me giving me an invoice 
Is it goddamn Mexicans? Because that's all I see cutting grass out here in Houston, Texas. Right? And they do a good goddamn job when they do it, too. So, as a black man, if you're black saying that, which most likely Jay Daniels is, whoever this is in the comment section is black, uh, you can't do nothing for me, right? Because I don't go to church, sir. Since I don't go to church, um, yeah, you won't be in my face asking for a collection plate. <laughs> There's nothing you can do for me. Uh, anyway, so that was real quick, y'all. Um, if you want to call and give your, uh, your word, your opinion, your voice, you know I'm here to hear it. I know y'all wanted me to keep going with them statistics, but you know he didn't want to finish hearing them. St you know he didn't want to hear them statistics. Because once I stopped at number eight and I explained number eight, it wasn't looking good. Now, was it? It wasn't looking good. <laughs> let, me put the, let me put the number on the screen. Let me put the number on the screen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, let me see. Where is my phone number? There's my name. That's not it. What did, where's my number? I guess it erased itself. Hold on. Let me, let me, there it is. Okay. All right. Call a number if you want to, if, if I want to hear what you got to say about this show. What you thought about my guest? I think they like, baby, I'm, I'm a, I'm going to label this intellectual BDSM, intellectual BDSM, because, boy, I know they just like this pain. Spank me, Priscilla. Spank me. You want me, you want me to spank you some more? Yes. Pia, hit me again. Pia, hit me again. Let me put this gag ball in your mouth so you don't have to say nothing while I do it. <laughs> Y'all like that shit, don't you? That's why you keep coming here. You keep coming here because you know damn well Priscilla going to spank that bootay. <laughs> Oh, intellectual BDSM. Call the number 832-627-6575. I want to hear what you got to say. Don't be shy. I hope this phone ain't acting crazy and not taking calls. Um, yeah. Hit the line, hit the line, hit the line. He didn't know this before he came. Yes, they all know it. He knew it. He'd been in my show a couple times. He didn't be not not on the show, but he didn't been in the comment section. He didn't heard a little bit. He already knew. Right. I don't even know why they think they got a position at all. When I didn't already told you, hey, man, women really going their own way, man. If you want to go smoke crack, man, go smoke crack. <laughs> I hope you have a good time smoking it. <laughs> all right. Whatever you want to do. It's up to you. We ain't tripping. 1027. Somebody just called and I missed that call. Let's see. I didn't hear it. Hear it. Who called? Let's see. The text now subscriber you were. I don't know who that I don't know who that was that called. Um hmm. Oh, was she? Hey man. <laughs> I don't think they like I don't think they like when I tell them. You wash his clothes, and he, you know, you doing all the labor, and he go out and cheat on you, right? Chasing the bad bitch, and I'm like, shoes, if you want to be a slave, baby, be a slave. I'm going to send my clothes so that you can wash mine, too. <laughs> baby, baby, they don't know. So, do we have any callers? Because I, I don't know why y'all do this. Why y'all wait for the first person to call before somebody before y'all flood the lines? It's like, well, let me see if somebody gonna call first. All right, there we go. Y'all playing games. When I open up the phone lines, just call immediately. Hello. Hey, hey who I'm talking to? Man, this is Genesis. Hey, how you doing, girl? I'm like, dude, why do you people like even trying to debate you? They not ready. They not ready for the debate. They be like coming on here, and they and you think they put their whole like they set it up. They put their whole uh, outfit on, put their glasses on, set up their whole like set up, and then and then just don't be ready for it. Like what are you doing? <laughs> Look, check this out. 
They say they want a woman to submit, but when she actually submit, they get mad. They can't do because what I do, I'm submitting. Y'all say y'all want to go. You want to go overseas? I submit. Go overseas. <laughs> Man, I thought this guy was ready. He had a microphone. He had a table, a desk, and everything. A background. I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be the one that's going to give her, like, you know, it's going to be a show tonight. This dude was like... Well, well, I guess, uh, you know, well, you, okay, well, I'm just going to hit them, don't leave them, blah, 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 blah. Like, what, what? You can't win with a person who ain't putting up a fight. <laughs> we never got to talk about our men incapable of love. What happened to the subject? It it, it just our, went, it went it, left. Incapable of love never got to that point because he was so busy, like, well, you don't like what I'm just saying about people that okay, then I'm okay, I give up then. Goodbye. And I'm just to to go to bed. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> you put your whole, like, you just set this whole microphone up, set your table up, got the lights and everything, put the thing up. <laughs> no, okay, well, never mind. Baby. But here's the thing. <laughs> Check this out. Check this out. All these dudes that want to try to debate me or challenge me on this love concept, they have weeks to prepare. They, I'm serious. They got weeks. And here's the thing. They know what I'm teaching from. They know what I'm talking from. They never get to that point. They never get to the point of discussing that subject. That's because they can't, they can't hang. You know why they can't hang? up here and, and, and debate. Why are men incapable of love? What well, they can't, if, so, if they are capable of love, like explain, but right? They can't like, explain because none of them have even read my book. They <laughs> know that I'm talking from my book and I stand on conviction, but instead of them buying the book and reading it to come prepared, they don't. They come on emotion. They can't even get up here and say that what I'm talking, point out exactly what's in my concept to say that it's wrong. But then he got up here, he got up here and within 30 seconds, within 60 seconds, proved that he was incapable of love. Within 60 seconds of him talking, he proved that he was incapable of love. And if you haven't read my book, if you have not come, uh, joined, um, saw my workshop breaking down this concept, you just ain't going to understand what I'm talking about. You have to have the book and you have to see my workshop, how I break it down. When you see that, you will begin to see the truth about men the way I see it. And you will see every tactic, you will see the delusion, you will see everything, and you will really understand that they're incapable of love, and you will be able to point it out in 20 seconds just like I do. You, you, you eat them up. You eat them up. And I think that, listen, I don't know who's, what, Saw Netter need to, like, y'all, you need to get on Saw Netter TV and, and eat them up like this, because... I think that these guys that are getting on your platform are so black. Like, they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. They don't even know how to debate, for real. You need to get, like, a, like with some debaters. Because these, these guys are like, I don't even know why. Why do they contact you? Oh, I want to debate. But then came at the end of the day. Like, what are you talking about? Like, Y'all got to know, debate. you have to know men's nature. Men's nature is about conquering things. And men are motivated to conquer a woman that he has not conquered, that poses a challenge. I pose, I pose an intellectual challenge for men to try to humble me, to try to come and conquer me. It's too easy. That's how they are. This is men. And y'all ain't, y'all not seeing that. They're going to keep coming here. Oh, you just got the wrong one. I can handle you. I can handle you because let me tell you something. The strongest man will never be stronger than the strongest woman ever. Only maybe physically, but not emotionally, not spiritually, not nothing else. I'll uh, show you showing it. You're showing it. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you like your kudos and, and shouts out because 
every time I see you go against every, uh, 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 each person, they can't they can't go against you. And I'm like, I'm just waiting on the. I'll say, okay, well, I got it, and then do it. Like, okay, well, do it then. They're not gonna. Be and, and nobody, and nobody, and nobody been able to do it. Like, no, really, it's it's too much. But I just want to you, you know, girl, um, shouts out. I watch you. I've been sharing your live and with all my friends, and I just shouts out to you. Thank and I'm you. About to go. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> all, right. all right. If you're in here, in here, make sure you get the likes up. All right. Let us know that you enjoy the conversation. Everybody that's sending super chats, I appreciate it. Uh, let me put my cash app up there. Um, and I, hopefully... And, and I, the book club, the book club, if you want to be a part of the book club, registration is open. It's going to be limited seating. And the reason why we're going to have limited seating is because I am going. This is an interactive class. I am going to teach you how to dissect. This is not just a, a, a book club where we just go read and we come shoot the shit. No, I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you male psychology. I'm teaching you how to see this world for what it really is and how to actually read what's there. Right. And how to apply it. Right. So this is an interactive class. So I can't have a whole bunch of seats. Okay. Unknown caller. Hello. Who am I speaking with? Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie, how you doing? I'm great. Listen, I absolutely love you. My homegirl put me on to you, and I think it's because I beat on her ass. <laughs> and she was like, oh, you know, you need to listen to her. And I was like, she be saying a lot of stuff that I be saying to you. Yeah. But listen, you know, I, I look at, like, this perspective that you give. A lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. They don't. You know, from my perspective, I'm just like, this is what it is. You know, I got boys in the house mm -hmm. and they know what it is. Right. I'm not playing with them. I don't, you know, sugarcoat none for them. I'm trying to raise a man that is wanted. Right. But, I, but they also know mama don't need that. Right. They don't, they know that because they seen their father. They know. They know that I was on a pedestal 24-7. Mm -hmm. That is not, that was, that was 2000. That's not 2002. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's very different. It makes me very, that I see, I didn't know what it was like to be single and be out here dealing with the things that I see that women are dealing with on a daily basis. It really makes my heart, because I'm just like, we shouldn't have to go through this. Like uh, the things, uh, and you're talking about using women, and, and he said that, oh, well, you know, there's more. No, there are not more educated men than women because uh, there is not any, any time that I've sat in any room, there was never no black man in that room. Exactly. I even gave the stats on one of my shows, uh, the other uh, last couple shows one of them uh where i showed that 65 percent of doctoral medical and dental degrees were achieved by black women 65 percent right and so i don't know what these dudes talking about 79 percent bachelor degrees and i think like it was 71 percent master's degrees all achieved by black women. Exactly. So I don't know what he's talking about. No, he, he's, he's got falsehoods. And at the end of the day, my entire circle are highly educated women that always have a Dusty in a warehouse trying to holler at them. And the only thing he got to do is pick and pull. That's all he got to do. And, and so so now you're an eligible bachelor. And then you and then, you no, know, what well, we got to dumb ourselves down. We got to have kids. We got to be your slave. No, that's not what this is. Mm -hmm. I don't want no more children because guess what? What, what y'all say? Choose better. I did choose better. Mm -hmm. I chose better. As to the re I didn't even want no damn kids. Mm -hmm. I chose better and I gave him what he wanted. I didn't want it. I, 
born it. And I, I've told my children that is not the life for myself. I knew what I wanted for myself because I came from a singer. So I knew what I children and all that. I didn't want that. But everybody ain't deserving of that. Mm -hmm. They actually understand when something is good, it's presented to us. Yes, we can. But you ain't good. That's the problem. Right. You're not as good as you purport yourself to be. Right. They live in a land of delusion, for sure. And I, I, but, but I, I we're like the delusional one. But I like to bring. I like for them to come on here so that they can expose the reality of who they really are. Right. And they all do it. Every last one of them, with the exception of Ken, and with the exception of Ken and Adrian, every single dude that comes on here purports himself to be something that he really ain't. That to be different. And they're all the same. You're gonna see the same behavior out of all of them if you watch my shows all of them and you watch how they act you will see the same mentality come from each and every last one of them we don't have to watch the show we actively live it mm -hmm. we sitting here we not coming for them they coming for us mm -hmm. we didn't call for them they came mm -hmm. we, oh, but you, but we living our best lives we going on vacation. We doing everything we want to do with that's our not, lives. That's not all Child women. That's not all women. There are women who are still stuck under the delusion of patriarchy and they're trying to come out of it. So not all women doing that. But I'm trying to get women to that point where she's breaking her mind from being attached to him. You well, have. I. Yeah appreciate you doing that because anybody in my air anybody that's connected to me baby no we gotta we gotta do what we need to do and we can't be crying and snotting over somebody who can't do for what we can do for our own mm -hmm. we can create our own happiness we don't need nobody else to do that like he said well why, why does why do women want to be married okay yeah that it would be great if we have a suitable partner Mm -hmm. If he's not suitable, we don't want it. That's the difference. It's not that, oh, well, we want somebody. No, we want the right person. But here's the thing. The only reason that women want marriage is because, one, they're codependent. Two, they've been sold it under patriarchy. They have not been sold you can do and be whoever you want and you can love yourself. They have been sold to look for love from a man and to try to keep one. That's the only reason women are getting married. And then when they test out that that shit that's been sold to them they divorce and they never want to remarry again i get that i do get that yeah. i think i come from a different perspective is because i came from like the flip side like i i really how i I'm, like how do i expect a man to love me when i don't even feel like my own father loves me mm -hmm. but, but how how right but i did meet somebody who how he felt the but the flip side with his was his mom mm -hmm. so maybe we had a trauma bond maybe that's what we had mm -hmm. but at the same time we were good for each other but that is not normal and i see that and now me having to deal with everything that's going through what it is and you know it the only thing that i know is to teach my sons because you know what this this is not you know, I'm not going to sit back and let you treat some say nothing. No, that's not going to be that because if she calls me, I guarantee you I'm not going to be on your team. Mm -hmm. It's just not, that's not a thing. I, like I said, there are, it's not, I don't, I don't need a man for nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm everything for myself. I don't need, I want you. It's not that I need you. I don't need you for nothing. And at the end of the day, like I said, with his false claims as men, no, y'all are not better off than us. Because mm -hmm. you can't do what I'm doing right now. Right. You on live, on TikTok crying about... I seen it. I seen it, I seen it earlier this week. And I laughed because I'm like, this man don't have no children. He ain't got no family, nothing. And he's crying about bills and people taking advantage of him. But instead... We get that every day. Mm -hmm. Right. We get used all the time. They, they, and we have children. And they can't. Men fix their mouths 
to ask us for money and we got whole children out here mm -hmm. and he crying mm -hmm. and this this dude sat up here literally said when we not get off her work we don't want to hear all that nagging but as if we don't work double and carry the boatload of responsibility in every area so but the you, thing is, you go to work with nine to five. Don't start off as nagging. Hmm? It never. It never. No, it don't. No, it it, it always and he starts didn't off. want to address that. It don't start off as nagging. We talking and we talking and we talking. We blew in the face. But here's and the thing. We get you fed talking. Up, that's when you. You talking. You talking. Here's the thing. You talking is nagging he to listen. them. Yeah. You he talking is nagging. He's not listening. But like I said, the the type of man that a woman wants. Which is few and far between is somebody who will actually listen to them and wreck their behavior. They don't do that. Well, the they just don't. The desire that, that women have for men is a manufactured desire, right? It what really what women what men really are here for is for good times, really. You no, know, to have fun. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They're here for a good time, right? They even tell you, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. They, that, that is their nature. They're not, they were not created for men and for women to have long-term relationships with. That, that's not what masculine energy is, and women have been sold a falsehood. And this is why you keep running into brick walls, because women do not know the nature of men, what they're here for, and who they are in relation to women. They, women don't know. And they're trying to make men act out of their nature or they're trying to drag men to a level that they're incapable of getting to. But I, Priscilla, I do feel like there are some women that feel that way is because it wasn't because they were conditioned to feel that way. It's because they had an actual role model that treated them way and them that way. And they thought that that's what it's supposed to be. You, know, you have those, but those are those are not the majority, right? It's just not the majority. Yeah, so probably most probably right. Those are not the majority. Most people. My home girl is probably not the majority. Her her dad was an awesome man, mm -hmm. but how many of us can can say that you know, mama and he like we were at the pedestal, like he would fall on a sword for us. Eh, not too many, and not too many. And, and like I said, it, it's not it's not a it's it's really not a thing. And that's why I'd be like, well, you know, I am not going to sit up here and let my sons be out here like that. No, you, you are, go you going, you know who is running the house here. Because if it wasn't for me, it wouldn't be nothing. Let's just be honest. And and the the downplaying of a woman's role. Oh well, a man is gonna make more money. Yeah, cause we underpaid. How am I sitting up here making six figures? And I'm underpaid. If I was you, I would make double what I make. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do that, sir. And let's just be honest. Y'all ain't bringing in bread like that. So stop. Right. Stop it. You're right. You're well, not. Because when I sit down at these meetings, I don't see a black face in it but me. Mm -hmm. Y'all not there. You're not present. Right. So cut the bullshit. Like, really. Like, I'm... I am beyond tired of hearing a man feeling like, a, especially a black man, because y'all not in the room. Because mm -hmm. you was too busy running the streets when we was teenagers and we had our face in a book. When we decided, well, we're we going to have to get it by any means. Y'all was out here trying to uh, sell a dime bag. Mm -hmm. I hate to cut y'all, but we got other callers. I thank you for giving Okay, you yeah, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you. I love you. And I will continue to watch you and keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Right, Hello. Who am I speaking with? This is Janae. Hey, Janae. How you doing? Hi. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Um, I just want to point out one thing. I came in at the tail end, so um, can't really give any commentary on that other than, of course, he wasn't ready. <laughs> but the thing that I want to point out to men and women is it comes to these gender wars. We're fighting for our life, depression, violence, our children, things that we're not safe when it comes to men. They're fighting 
for their privilege to be lazy mm-hmm. and to get over on us. Yep. That is the core of why I am no nonsense when it comes to gender war thing, because it's too reminiscent of black versus white. You know, you hear, you've heard the terms, oh, the black man is somewhat white, you know, the white man to black women. Right. But white people are, were fighting to keep their privilege. They weren't going to give it up. They're not going to give it up. And that's what I'm seeing in men. You guys aren't fighting because we're killing y'all excessively or, you know, at the hands of us, you've developed a mental issue and all the things. We're not killing children as much as men are. You guys are fighting for your privilege and you're Mm -hmm. fighting tooth and nail so you don't have to wash the dishes. We're fighting for our lives. Right. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, that's the core of why. I think a lot of women should look at it their way and just wake up like fighting for their privilege, girl. You're fighting for your sanity. Right. <laughs> right. But yeah, I, I just wanted to point that out. Um, it's very similar <clears throat> to black and white. You know, black, the racial issues is very it, similar. It, if it they is. have a privilege, they're not going to give it up. At the end of the day, no matter what issue you're dealing with, it's all, it's all for the self-preservation of the ego. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right. And the people have weak egos. And so, like I said, if y'all read the book, I know you read it, Janae. Uh, I have. A lot of pe- a lot of people have read it. If you've read the book, you understand or you have an idea of what love is. If you've taken it a step further and you've seen my workshop. Right. You know unequivocally what love is and what it ain't. And. What you'll find out is when you analyze these dudes, you will be able to see 100 percent that they are incapable of love, period. And if you read the first if you read the book, you know, they can't get past the first damn component. They can't get past the first one. (laughs) Oh, they they can't compute at all. Like, is they're done. And I want to say another thing. Any of your next, you know, what do we call these guys? Because they're not even opponents at this point. But your, your next guest. <laughs> they, I, don't I know. mean, my next victim. <laughs> victim, right? Because um, that's all they, they look. They sacrificial lambs. They are sacrificing themselves on my platform for to expose the nature and the psychology or the psych. Not so the psychology, the psychosis. <laughs> And I call them social experiments. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you're doing. You're actually helping Princella prove her point. That's it. So not to give you advice because about any of you, but the next guys that come on here, try to do your homework. I the book. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that because they are <laughs> under the delusion that they're more logical than women and that they can use talking points to shatter. And they have they don't know how I'm going to come. They're not intellectually prepared, but they have convinced themselves that they're intellectual and logical. Yet they don't have a library. <laughs> okay. They don't. The only, the, no, they, they have went to a K- backdrop and a pair of glasses. That's they, what they, got. they went to KS University <laughs> and thought they was ready for war. <laughs> they oh not. Oh my God. This is hilarious. Oh this is yeah. entertaining. But, for me. Uh, it's very entertaining. Um, it's not a waste of time, but they're definitely not formidable foes at all. Mm-hmm. They're just not. But here's, here's, <laughs> the, here's the, it's, it's gold. It's gold yeah. for them to be here because you have many women. For real, Mm -hmm. who have gotten caught up in relationships with men like this and they've been led to believe that it's only some men or you better pick right or the wrong one. Pick right. But here's the thing. When they see that it's the majority of men that have the same traits and they all say the same thing and make it seem like they're the one, this will Mm -hmm. help the woman open her eyes that, baby, it don't matter which one you pick. It don't matter which one you pick. You're yep. going to run into the same shit. So yep. you, you're, you're not going to be able to get something like love from a man because men are trapped in the self-preservation area of humanity. Mm-hmm. And they can't get out. I totally agree. I totally agree. I don't know if my phone cut out because it's raining out here where I am. So I'm going to let you go because I can't hear anything. But... Awesome, awesome, awesome.
Um, you know I love you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, today. <laughs> Bye. All right. All right. Phone. The, the line is clear. Next caller. The next caller. The line is clear. This was like one. Man, listen. I usually. Trev Smooth kept me on YouTube for eight hours. <laughs> Typically, my shows be going about three, four hours. Unknown caller. Baby, this was the fastest one. <laughs> This was a, this was a Mike Tyson TKO knocked out in 20 seconds. <laughs> who, who am I speaking with? Hi, let me turn let me turn my volume thing down. Mm -hmm. And I turn this thing off. Oh, okay. How you doing, Sister Priscilla? This is Hazel. I'm excellent, Hazel. How you doing? I'm good. I'm not gonna be in here long. What's wrong? What's happening again? Oh, I gotta go in the other room. I'm sorry. Yes, I was calling. I'm not gonna be in here long. But um, I'm gonna thank you because I just wanted to tell you something that happened. Um, the other day I was at Walmart and I want to fool my daughter because she's going through stuff with her whatever that man right mm -hmm. so i'm telling her all these things and people are stopping i'm not even noticing people are listening to me mm -hmm. people were listening to my conversation and they started joining in and they started laughing because i was telling that you i was using some of your talking points i don't know a lot but i'm learning and i'm just giving what i got mm -hmm. and this man this this pastor came out of nowhere it was a white man he came out of nowhere he said listen what you said is a lot of truth. Can you come to my church? And I want you to speak to the sister. A lot of people don't speak like that. <laughs> no one speaks like that. I'm like, I'm looking at him like, what? I'm just learning myself. But I'm like, oh my God. So I'm going to give it everybody a YouTube channel. And he wants me to come to his church. And I'm going to do that. And I'm just learning. <laughs> Girl. It was wonderful. I felt so happy because crazy. it's like people are being free and they know it's true, but no one's saying anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, I, and I was thinking, I said, I'm going to ask Sister Priscilla, please make a flyer. Because I would love to put flyers out there so people could, you know, get on this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, yeah. I'll get them to you. Because <laughs> I would love to put flyers out because they got flyers for everything. Out there, if you had a fight, I know people would get on this. The women would get on it because they were all around. I didn't even notice it. I'm on the phone. Oh. I didn't know these people were listening. So I'm not going to that man's church right now. I don't know enough to tell him any, you know, the girls anything right now. I did a little bit. Yes, but so, uh, so I gave him the YouTube channel to get to the women. Yes. <laughs> so, Every time I, can I give you a hug? I just want a hug. I'm like, no, thank you. You don't have to. I don't need that emotional mess. Get out of it. He wants to hug me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so awesome. I just, I just wanted to tell you that, like, it's it's divine. I'm telling you, it's so divine. Oh, my goodness. But I love you, sis. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much, Hazel. You have a good night. Okay, you have a good night, sweetheart. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah, ain't nobody gonna stop this goddamn train. You hear me? They know I'm telling the truth. They know I'm giving it all. <laughs> I oh, and they scared of me. They scared. Cause they know. <laughs> hey man, I don't care if you ever get your goddamn act together. <laughs> you done fucked up when you had the power, you squandered it. You squandered it and you ain't know what to do with it. And now when you have the when you have the power, you only want to use it to destroy the woman. Well, guess what? She ain't gonna let you destroy her no more. And she don't owe it to you to destroy herself behind you. You ain't worth it. Trust me. You can have a million dollars and you wouldn't be worth it, sir. Right? Next caller. Next caller. I love it. I love uh, 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah. Come on, call. You know, I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, ain't nothing like freeing souls. That's what we're here for. 
We are going to free souls. Mm -hmm. The men will never be free because they're trapped. They their own worst enemy. Not you, ladies. You are not their enemy. They their own worst enemy. And let them, let them do them. Let them fall by the wayside. I don't care. Let's see who that was. 703. 703. Damn, we only been on here for two hours. Okay. Miss Princella. Yes. Good evening. Who am I speaking with? This is Shirley Stewart. Hey, Miss Hey, Miss Shirley. How you doing? How you doing? I'm fantastic. Just want to say another one bites the dust. <laughs> Yeah, that guy, I tell you, that's, that's disgusting. It's just getting worse and worse. Um, just want to say that, first of all, these guys don't know how to debate. I don't know if they've ever taken a course on debating, but there's some serious issues. I wanted to also say that these, uh, your guests, I think they just want to be popularized and want to have the spotlight. And just achieve the reputation of just to be light, because it just doesn't make sense. They don't they don't prepare themselves before they come on to your show, and then they get all choked up after you, after you didn't set them straight. So, um, but I think what you're doing is great because it's also opening my eyes to what I always thought was true on what was really going on going on out here with men's mindset. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, it's, it's really true. And I think you know a little bit of my which I hope to share more with you and your audience one day. Yes, ma'am. Everything, you are a messenger. Uh, you're much, I'm much older than you. I think you just, I'm going to say this, a, a God sent. Because I've been thinking and uh, uh, working this and doing this for years. But it was, it, women, because in my business, there are, there are, any or not a lot of women so i kind of think different and i move different mm -hmm. you know what i mean so my thing is is that um this has been going on for a long time and when you bring up history like the 60s of how women were treated what we could not do mm -hmm. that's very very important how you do that because a lot of these men don't even read they do not read. They don't understand. They don't want to understand. They just want to stay stuck in their heads. So you keep doing what you're doing. I got you back. I was wondering, would you be interested in starting the Mastermind Alliance Club? I know you got a whole lot of stuff going on. Just read. You're going to do a book club, but you let me know. Yes, yes. Uh, we can talk um, offline. Okay. All okay. right. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Shirley. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, let's see. Okay. Uh... Hello? Hello, who am I speaking with? It's Genesis again. Hey, yes. Listen, I wanted to like ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So, do you know that and is having uh, enter so and so with a woman, right? Wait a minute, say that, that again. The, when a man is like getting on with a woman, uh -huh. do you know the man's the man's um uh uh uh, uh tool is shaped so that he could scoop a uh, competitor sperm out of the the genital tract. So, thank you, right? Yeah. So you know how these men are saying that was well, meant for a man to be uh uh. Uh, polygamous mm -hmm. because we have this, this, this so why wouldn't God create the man's Johnson for that whole thing you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. to me I'm like dude so it's like you got so men have have uh, 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 thwarted everything to mean a certain way but then when you actually look at science it's like no 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 it's even the other way around because women can like just do it all day long, right? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm well, that's what it was. That, that, that's what it was for. But that's a topic for another discussion, right? Right. So okay. we're gonna save that I, one. I, I, I wanted to to bring that up because I'm like, you know what? Like the whole objective of the, this whole thing is like the whole thing about men is that they want to make it seem like 
that, okay, it's about monogamy and marriage and being in a relationship and being one-on-one, but really they want polygamous relationships. They want to be able to do what they want to do and date multiple people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then have you here, even though that the, all this whole thing, most of the people that's uh, all, even on like your panels are probably dating other women. Even they say that they're in happily marriage situations. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm married and I, I have a, a wife. Ha, 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 ha. Bull crap. You're cheating on her. I guarantee you. Mm-hmm. We, we can talk about that uh, on, on another one because I talk about all of those things. But I want to go ahead and continue to talk about it. We got some other callers that want to voice their opinion about this last caller. So we'll get that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I just wanted to say this guy was married. But I'm like, I can guarantee he's cheating on his wife and he's probably like, whatever. But I want to just, just put that out there. Okay. Yes, all indeed. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Next caller. All right. All right, y'all. Next caller. Make sure y'all get on the lines. Don't y'all why y'all do that? Why y'all do that? Give me all this time and space with no call. And then when one person called, then 15 people call at the same time. Why don't y'all just call right right when it's it's, it's peace and quiet? Y'all got an interesting <laughs> y'all got an interesting way of doing things, I swear. <laughs> but look, yeah. So um Listen, men need to assert, men need you, okay? They need you. And they need you to be available so that they can thrive and continue to do whatever it is they want to do, right? They need you to buy into marriage so they can use you. That's it. Everything that they're pushing out, they just need to use you, period. And you've been sold a lie to allow them to use you and they've manipulated you through this idea of love and that's why I break women up from love right I have to I have to show you what that is okay so the book club registration is up it's on my website princellathequeenmaker.com okay go to princellathequeenmaker.com and you can order the book and the workbook, okay? You can also register for the book club. It's there for you to register. After, after I move to my new place, then I will put the uh, workshop out. Unknown caller. Hello, who am I speaking with? This is Triniana in the chat. Hi, Princella. How you doing, Triniana? How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. I just wanted to call in and thank you so much for everything you do. I love listening to you and uh, just learning from you. It's really, really helping me clear my mind about failed marriage and why I could not get any leadership skills out of my ex-husband. Mm-hmm. So basically, I was looking for something that, you know, he basically wasn't capable of. Mm-hmm. He, um, he, he was ex-military, and I was thinking that he was going to, you know, lead the family, make decisions, and basically incapable of doing any of that. I ended up being the one who made all the major decisions in the marriage. And so that got so overwhelming that, you know, the marriage did not continue. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, just learning that leadership is not an innate quality was such a breath of fresh air. It just helped me understand. I was looking for something that he just was not capable of giving. Absolutely. And you know how that frees you? Oh, hold on. Yeah. Y'all. I gave y'all let me talk for five minutes before one person called. And as soon as one person called, now all y'all trying to call. (laughs) Look, once y'all hear a person on the line, then I got I'm using my cell phone. I can't I can only take one call at a time. Once my line goes clear. 
That's when y'all need to call. Y'all don't need to wait to see who going to call first and be like, okay, now I can follow that person. Just call the line. <laughs> and I'm going to get to all of y'all. I am. But y'all need to just call as soon as the person hang up. All right. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, you know, in my first marriage and in my second marriage, um, I was very traditional you know, I, of course I worked, but I also took care of the kids and, you know, cooked, cleaned, you know, supported my husbands and did everything that I thought a good wife should do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obvi obviously the reciprocity just wasn't there. And it would always kill me because, you know, these were men who on paper looked great, you know, great girls. Facebook and social media and everyone was just like, what are you complaining about? But it was something about the fact that I felt like a married single mother all the time. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't shake the feeling that my effort, my support, my, um, my commitment and emotional labor in the marriages were not reciprocated at all. And now, after reading your book, um, you know, it, it's just like, it's freeing because I can literally, you know, go out on dates, have companionship with men, hang fun, have a nice dinner, dress up, and then go to my own house with my own peace, my own, you know, I, I recently got another uh, marriage proposal from a nice guy who's also you mm -hmm. and I refused because he wanted you know he wanted me to move in with him and you know do all these I didn't want to do it anymore I love my independence I love being able to just like men have fun with men enjoy their company and then go to my own house so I just wanted to thank you for that and um, I'll clear the line for other people to call Thank you, Triniana. I'm so happy that you found the right way. <laughs> yes. And, and by the way, I'm related to T. Colic, which is hilarious. Are you? I have <laughs> <laughs> because when you dragged him so bad, I was like, I finally like went on his page and I was like looking at all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, I just had to block my own relative because of his toxic views about women. Mm -hmm. So. Thanks for bringing that to light, too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you free in every area now. <laughs> Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye. <laughs> To everybody that's sending cash apps, I, I'm going to get to you and I'm going to read everybody's cash apps that they send to me. I, we so caught up in this show, I haven't had the opportunity to just look at everybody's uh, cash apps and um uh, super chats uh i want to make sure but i'm going i'm gonna call y'all out uh at the end of the show so thank you please um if, right now everything if you're sending something to cash app if you're sending something to cash app you're doing two things for me right now you are supporting the show and you are helping me move from underneath cruella and the 101 Dalmatians upstairs. You're helping me move to a peaceful area where I don't have ghetto people causing me problems and me living in an environment where they're shooting and stuff, okay? Now, I don't live in the hood. The apartment complex brought the hood over here because they, they just, they, they, they transferred uh, management and they just started letting anybody over here. So now I got to go. So whenever you put something in there, you are literally helping me to secure my new place. You're going to help this. It's going to help me get the people to help me move or pack this shit up and everything. So please um, make sure you support the show by dropping it in Cash App. Thank you. All right. Um, now the line is open, okay? Why y'all ain't calling? <laughs> y'all ain't calling. Call the line. Soon as somebody hang up, Amaya, we're not going to do that. Come over here and show them your dress. Come on over here and show them your dress. Hello. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> What is, what, is, what is that? What you got on here? Unicorn? That's a unicorn? Yeah. yeah. Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. 
I love you. I love you. Ah. <laughs> All right. Say bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Be careful. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So. We got anybody else that want to say something on the show? Because, hey, look, I'm off Monday. I'm off Monday because of holiday. So guess what? That means I can do a show tomorrow. And I want to be able to break down a conversation that was held on my Facebook page. I'm going to go in the comments and I'm going to put this on the screen because I want you to see the tactics that men use. I, these dudes think I'm playing with them. They really think I'm playing with them. I'm blocking these guys left and right. And a lot of the guys that I'm blocking have been on my page for between four and seven years. And I'm blocking them left and right, right? But I blocked Khan Ali. Somehow, Khan Ali found his way back to me on a different platform, on Facebook. And he called himself coming in my comment section thinking he about to cause some dissension between the people that support me. And he thought he was going to pull some divide and conquer shit. And I want to be able to expose the mentality of a person who does that. I want you to see how they do it. And they too silly to even see, to, to even know that, baby, you writing words that I can see this. Not only can I hear it, sir, I have it in my hand. Now I can break it. Am I up? No. I can break it down sentence by sentence to show the deception and the intent. Let me tell you something. Men need y'all for all kind of reasons. They need women as a token device. Amaya, I want you to take that toy. I want you to take it in your room and go play with it, okay? Take it in your room because I, that's interfering with what I'm doing here. Right. All right. So they need you as a token. And what do I mean? They need you as a token. They need to find a woman. Let me tell you what happened. It is a chick to come in there. And she asked me a question. Two times. Unknown caller. Hold on. Come back to that. Who am I speaking with? Hello. Hi, baby boy. This is Courtney. So can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm good. <laughs> I've been watching you for maybe about like a month or two now. I found you scrolling on TikTok and I came right over to Instagram. And, well, not Instagram. I'm sorry. Right over here to YouTube and I followed you. Mm -hmm. And Ever since then, you have been teaching me just so, so, so much. I'm 26. I am still young in my prime. I did mess up with the guy. I met him, what, five, six years ago. And I was thinking, like, you know, he was the love of my life and just all this stuff. And it's like, you know, they they try to come as if they are one thing and they, they not, you know. And so I'm glad that my eyes have been open to see uh, the trueness of what these guys are, what they are really, you know. And so, and I'm not mad. I was at first mm -hmm. because I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many women being bamboozled, being tricked, naive, being, you know, they're stuck, you know, literally mentally, emotionally, physically, sexually stuck with these men. And it's like, if you don't get out of it, it's going to ruin your life. And so it's like, I'm in the process right now of just really cutting ties with my baby's father because I realize I, I love myself more than I love a man. And I think 
so many women need to learn that because if you learn to love yourself, you will let go. You will let go because you realize it's not worth it. And so I'm, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for your message. And um, I, I absolutely adore you. You're awesome. You definitely put a whole different perspective in my mind that I never thought about. I never thought about it. And now that, you know, um, I just see the real, really are, even the one, you know, is, you know, I'm like, okay, you're such a good guy, but you still got you too, so you ain't that good, you know, or you, you know, so, um, I'm grateful for the message. I really am. And uh, I just hope that you continue to enlighten women, enlighten us, too, because we need you. We really do. Thank you so much. Thank you. I certainly appreciate it. And good luck to you. Keep on watching. We got you. Thank you. I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. The line is ended. Now call. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, is it a delay in what I'm saying? Is it a delay? It like y'all hear this person hang up? Can you call? Ten minutes go by, nobody call. One person call, fifteen people call. <laughs> All right. All right. Next caller. I want y'all to know that this is gonna be the most accessible that I will ever be in the future. Right? This is the most accessible that I will ever be in the future. Y'all are at the beginning of a wonderful movement that is going to take place, that is taking place. You're at the beginning, and it's going to sweep the world by storm. That's why, this is why you don't have to, I want you to disengage. Disengage. Don't go looking at these male podcasts. Ignore them. Turn them off and focus that attention on yourself and your personal development. Heal the relationship between you and other women. Stop competing. Competition is not in the nature of women. The nature of women is communal. The poison of women is competition. And this is a result of patriarchy, an anti-nature philosophy, anti. All right. So let's bring it back into divine order. All right. Continue to speak life. Continue to support. Soon as you hear a dude trying to drag Lizzo down, you raise Lizzo up. Right. This, that's how you do it. Because they need they use you. They use you as tokens. Young women, they use you to draw a divide between you, the, your generation and an older generation. So that they can keep you isolated. Let me tell you something about a manipulator, a man that's trying to use you and drain you. Unknown caller. He must separate you. From anybody that can speak something different in your ear. Hello, who am I speaking with? Peace, love, and all the good stuff. This is Jasmine to them. Hey, Jasmine, how you doing? Doing all right. So I saw that you had mentioned that this is going to be like the most accessible that you don't ever be. So I decided to call in because mm -hmm. it was something on my heart that I wanted to say for the young women who be listening to you, who not really very experienced. I'm 31 now, and I think after listening to you, I think I realized the most important thing that I think I did that was the biggest mistake was pursuing a man. Mm -hmm. That because basically I realize now how unnatural and how detrimental that that can actually be to your future. Because when you pursue a man, it's just, it's all wrong. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, basically, even if you have general interest in companionship or this, that, or whatever, pursuing a man, I don't know, it's just, it's something about it that just will leave you stuck. Think, 
I know I haven't purchased your book yet, but I've been listening to you. And just from listening to you, a lot of the little stuff that you have hit on really put that in perspective for me. So I wanted to put that out there. Yes. You know. Thank That's you. all I wanted. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Peace and love. All the good stuff. Yes, indeed. Uh. <laughs> All right, call. Are we are we watching the show? Unknown caller. Hello, who am I speaking with? This is Kim Hardwick calling out of Arizona. It's looking like a call off TKO. Hey, what's up? Can you come closer to the phone? You sound kind of far away. I know you got us on speaker. It's Kim Hardwick, and I'm calling you from Arizona. I want to salute you. Thank you. Because it, look, it looks like another love TKO. Yes, it is. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Priscilla, I like your package and delivery. It's almost like FedEx, you know? Yes. <laughs> uh, Red Bull gave you your wings, you know? Mm -hmm. I look at you as another matador as I am. Mm -hmm. As we stand, us. I retired at the age of 40 from the airline industry. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that good men, because he has a job, or a good job, he's a good man. Right. And that is like taking the red pill that's a cookie uh narrative that your mother implants in your in little girl's heads that you have to serve the man and do this and you you should get married while you're still single but being a caretaker of a special needs child a lot of people prey on you and think you need a man and you need you know mm -hmm. this and that narrative but I like the fact, and I congratulate you. I'm not going to hold up your line. I love your package and delivery because the revolution will be televised. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for the matriarch. Thank you for your stance. Thank you for having those boots on the ground because these women need to love themselves primarily and we can change the world. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you. I appreciate it, Kim. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate all y'all's calls. I appreciate all your support. I appreciate it all, right? And it just keeps, it, it does a few things. It hooks new people in when you come and tell your story or you come and show your gratitude, right? Because you, they need to know that this is a place for them to be. This is where they need to be. And they need to hear testimonies. That's why you're calling. That's why you're calling so that they can see that they're not alone. They're not alone. There's other people out here that feel the same way. And when women band together, you create a force to be reckoned with. When men band together, they destroy the world. But when you band together, you bring healing to the world. And you put men in the place they're supposed to be. Women have to get it together. And you have to rid yourself of patriarchal philosophy. So by you calling the line and expressing what you learn or how you feel or how your life has changed with just a little bit of information, just a little bit, it makes it it makes it very, very powerful, attractive for other women, right? And that's what we want, right? Because we're not trying to be selfish with what we learn. We're not trying to be act like we better than anybody else because that ain't what this is about, right? What this is about is growth. We're on a spiritual journey, right? So this is unknown color. What, and what you want for yourself, you should want for your sister. Right? Who am I speaking with? Hey, Priscilla. How are you? I'm excellent. How you doing? Can you come closer to the phone? Okay. I have my earphones in. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. First of all, I feel like I'm about to throw up because I'm so freaking nervous. 
ain't nothing to be nervous about. <laughs> and never like called like you know on the show or anything like that. Before. Mm hmm. Well, okay. you're in a safe I space. Okay, so you're not gonna judge me. Nope, not gonna judge you. Ain't nothing to judge. Uh, but if you doing the chat, ain't gonna judge me. They ain't gonna judge you either. You in a safe space. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the the short version. I think you're awesome, and I think what you're teaching. I apply that to my growth, but my situation is so fucked up. And I say that because I have a disabled husband. Mm -hmm. It didn't start off that. We were both young, happy, black, had goals, had dreams, got married, relocated, you know, and all that stuff. Like, I think and everything was going according to plan, and boom. <laughs> This nigga get in mess. Mm. Out of fucking nowhere. Plans, dreams, travel. Just enjoying fucking life. Mm -hmm. Gone. All the medications that he takes. There's no sex life, of course. Because that's the first thing to go. It don't work no more. Right. You know, see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And everything that comes with him there is fucking illness. Mm -hmm. I wish I could lie to you and say I do all this from the heart and I do all this out of love, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm doing it out of resentment now mm -hmm. because this, the situation is never going to change. He's not going to one day wake up and be Superman. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's just like every day is like, this is my fucking life. Right. And when you were like, stop. Look into the same person who can't do those things. Like, I'm still the, I, I want those things. I want the dream house. I want, you know, just to enjoy life. I want to be able to walk on sandy beaches. I want to do it all. And I feel like my growth is stunted. Mm -hmm. Bothers me because men never, you never take care of the woman. God forbid they get in a car accident and they become quadriplegic. Or the woman, you know, Get sick. And it's not the same way around. And I know if he was 100%. And God forbid that happened to me. He wouldn't be everything like I'm trying to be for him. He wouldn't. I know that. He would be fucking other women, right? Yep. That's exactly what he would be doing. He would be going out to find love and still say, well, I'm, I'm still growing up healthy. I still, you know, I got needs. And it, God forbid I have I say those things. Mm -hmm. God forbid I have those same desires, you know? Right. I don't want I don't want to do it anymore because I feel like if I'm gonna do it all by myself now, I might as well do it all by myself with the kids now. Mm -hmm. Like there's no incentive. And I know that sounds shitty. But come on. No, it's it realistic. It don't sound shitty, right? Because women have been picked up to be doormats and caretakers for men, right? At your expense, and you're not expected to. In this space, the truth will prevail. It ain't shitty. You're supposed to get something out of it. And you got, you got a fucked up end of the deal. Because exactly. the reality is, he would have left you if that was you. If, exactly. he if he didn't leave you, he would be cheating on you. Exactly, and giving me like a false reality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's not like he's nice. Like now he's transitioning to being an asshole. And I'm just like, oh, so you're going to be disabled and fucking mean. you you got to be that guy. Like he's not like every time I'm making him up for trying to go out of my way. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. This oh. nigga don't even talk to me now. Are you, you know you, you, ain't, I, you know you ain't obligated to stay there, right? But I feel like I am. I left like two years ago for two months to go to New York just to relax and to, you know, he made that whole time a living fucking hell for me. Like, they don't come back. And, and like, just the wording, like, can I step away from that shit for a little bit? My question to you is this. Do you want to free yourself from it? Because that's what I do. And it's it's just like, because like now we lost our house because I can't carry everything. 
so we live with his mom. And I feel like she judges me. Like, oh, I'm supposed to be bitching over backwards. Why? But somebody that don't love me, honestly, because he don't even love himself anymore. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's just wasting away. He wants me to fucking be miserable and waste away, too. That's what he wants, right? But it's not, I, I need you to get to the point where you know, not feel. I need you to know that's what it is. Because in, before you, in, in order for you to walk away from what, you, what clearly ain't serving you, because you are not obligated to stay there. You're not obligated to be his caretaker. You're not obligated to self-sacrifice. He can stay with his mama, okay? Now, in order for you to walk away, though, You've got to give yourself permission in your mind. And you've and you got to change your mind. You're not going to be able to change it by yourself, though. So if you really want to, if you really feel like you want the power to walk away, I can give you that power. And you will walk away with no guilt. You will not cry. You're going to walk away with your head held high and you're going to be happy that you freed yourself. If that's what you want, if you want to be free, I'm telling you, you need to follow me. You need to get one. You need to get all of my materials and you need to become a part of you need to you need to watch this uh, workshop. I can help you break that, that mentality and I can help you leave with, with the quickness. But you gotta want it. I can't force. I can't force it on you. You have to. Want it. And I, I feel like I feel like I, I keep beating myself up. You know what I mean? And then I feel I see my daughter, and she's seven. And if she sees an interaction between me and him, she always just go to his side. And then she'll come to me later and say, "Mommy, you shouldn't talk to Daddy that way. You have to love him." And I just be wanting to shake the shit out of her. It's like, girl, you have. But the way he. I feel like manipulates her emotionally. I, I don't want my daughter to think like that's okay. Like, no, if, if this is not a good situation. Leave. I don't care if it's healthy or sick. You know, and then I see my sons. I have two sons mm -hmm. lay around. Just because this fucking meatball lay around and don't do nothing, that's not what y'all supposed to do. You don't even like talk to them and pour into them. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's just like to sit there, like, like a, like a, like to sit there and just wait for the day to go by. Mm -hmm. Where's the inspiration for our children? Like, I can't, I work overnight. That's why I'm talking to you now. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's not it. It's not, and it's, I, I keep still looking to him to change, to, to be an equal partner, to be emotionally invested in me at least. That's the that's your problem. And it's not happening. That's your problem. That's your problem right there. At this point, you're doing it to yourself, right? And so, mm -hmm. I can stop you from doing it to yourself, though. I can fix you, but you just gotta want it. That's all. So when my next when my next when my workshop is when I when my workshop is launched, just come to the workshop. The workshop is the five components of love workshop. I will start to break you there, right? Because you've got to, what your, your investment, you have an investment in him and you're trying to force something that's not natural. And so the only way that you're going to be able to free yourself is you have to be, re you have to be rewired. You got to be rewired. I got to, I have to break some beliefs that you have. And you have these beliefs, not at your fault. It's not your fault because you were raised in a society that promotes this stuff like we all were. Right. So you to, you got to be rewired. That's all. Right. And uh, so I, I, I just recommend that you attend the workshop when I when I push it out there. Okay, I agree. I definitely agree. I just want to ask you one thing. Yes. Like, I'm happy to give myself permission, right? But well, what about his mom and the judgment from the sisters? Like, if I don't do it, you don't worry about I, that. I want to honestly, I want to put the nigga in the nursing home. No, no, no. And that may sound fucked up because he's only 44. But That's where he's supposed to be at, though. He's supposed to be in a nursing home. 
But that's what I'm trying to refrain from not. The doctor's discount is going to get worse. He's going to continue to decline. So I feel like I decline too. In having sex. Like, I'm still a young woman. You How, old you? How old are you? I'm, so, I'm 40. I just turned 40. Mm-hmm. And he's been, we've been going through this for like the last eight years. Mm-hmm. The last eight years. I got I, I understand. Here's the thing. What I'm trying to get you. These guys can't not go without sex for a fucking week. It's eight years. And I don't get no reward for that. Well, you got to get yourself. Taking his shit. I don't get no reward for that. I feel like I'm, I'm pretending that I'm in a happy marriage. I'm not. And I don't get no reward for that. You and I, I, us women, we beat ourselves up and we try to act like we're better than the next woman. And oh, uh, you don't get no fucking trophy at the end of the day because I'm being wear down. Other women are being worried that I didn't go and find somebody that's younger mm-hmm. with less fucking responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Well, like I say, and they can just go. And it's us that got to fucking carry the shit. I got three kids now. You know what I mean? Like, that I got to fucking fake for. Mm-hmm. It's faking. Mm-hmm. I understand. Trust me, I do. I understand how you feel. I understand all of that. Right? We all been there. Okay. And probably some of us have been there like you, but a lot of us have been there in other ways. But what I can tell you is this. I can I can see I can see where you where you are and what changes that need to be made, right? You're when you come to me, right? You're not when you come out on the other side, you're not even going to be concerned about what they say. It ain't even gonna matter to you. You're not even gonna give it a second thought, right? But you can't do that without clarity, right? You don't have any clarity right now because your beliefs, right, about relationships about life and all of that is skewed and what is driving your depression what is driving your dissatisfaction are key elements in your belief system and the only way that that's going to change is a strategic way that that has to change I can't just tell it to you right you have to see it for yourself right and so there's a way that it can be rewired okay and so I hear I hear you, I feel you, but at this stage in the ball game, it's about solutions, right? So let's solve your problem. Let's get you to a point where you are confident, you are strong, and you are okay with walking away. And you can take whatever they say, it ain't gonna matter. Y'all take care of them. That's your son. Or if y'all don't wanna take care of them, put them in a nursing home and you'll be able to say that and feel that and and walk away with a smile on your face while you're doing it right right. and that's where you that's where you want to go that's where i can take you but we are at solutions right now we are not at let's let's woe is me let's have a a pity party you know where you at you know where you want to go let me help you let me help you I'm with it. All right. I want you to email me. Put my email in the chat. Um, uh, moderators, my email is princella at princellathequeenmaker.com. Put that in there so that way she can have it and e- so she can email me. So I can uh, make sure that I add her so she can get all of the stuff when I put it out there. All right. All of my stuff is interactive and it, 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 it you have direct access to me. In each one of these things that I'm doing. All right. Okay. So you ain't got to worry. You are in the right place. And if you want to free yourself, I put my 100% guarantee that I can free you. I, I can do that. And by the end, of, by, the, by, by, the, by mid next year, 
You probably going to call me and say I walked away. And it probably be sooner than yeah, that. I bought my own house. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what they, And you're going to be so happy. You'll be so free. And you will not have to deal with it. And baby girl, you can go live your life however you want to live it. But I'm going to tell you something. Focus on, your, on you and your kids and go experience all that you want to experience. Right? Everything you want to experience, go do that guilt free. All right. Thank you, ladies. You, you know, you no problem. No problem. Stay, stick around. This is home. Don't go nowhere. All right. So they're going to put my email in the um, chat and visit my website. If they is princella the queen maker dot com. Everything is there. Okay. All right. Make me into a queen. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Hey, look, we, we say that like we say the titles and stuff, like, but I, I really want to feel that way you know what i mean like i really want to change my life and walk in that manner you know mm -hmm. and i have to let that go of even him contributing to any part of that like that shit is a dub like mm -hmm. <sighs> yep it is and that's what and that's one of the things i always tell people hey man i don't do that good morning queen stuff and all of that because everybody ain't a queen you got concubines you got slaves out here right mm -hmm. And I ain't interested. I ain't interested in turning slaves into no queens, right? It's hey, it's a chick out there that just want to say she got a man. Girl, send him to her. Let her take care of him, right? Um, you want to be a queen? Let me tell you, queens run shit. Queens run shit. Queens don't submit. And that's, that's the thing. Like, I, like they told me, oh, you emasculate him by making up his his act like his his voice don't even matter. What are you talking about? If I just listen to him, I'm not going to have nothing. It's like, what are you not getting? You want me to hold him to some standard of a healthy, functional fucking man. And he's not. You see what I'm saying? Right. So why I'm, and, and he's still trying to tell me, still submit to him. That's still the man of the house. That's still, and you should get up. Come on. Like, come on. I don't see him fucking... Drained and tired and drowning. They ain't. I'm the only one that's working here. Nope. What the fuck are y'all doing it? Nope, because like, you're a sacrificial lamb to ensure the survival of him, right? Of the, that's what I'm saying. That's the, the energy the mom gives me. Like, I'm just there to fucking take care of my fucking son. Yeah, because she don't want to do, do that. That's because she don't want to do like, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she want to use you to take care of him because she don't want to do it, right? OK, and so you got a lot of things that you need to be broken from. Right. A lot of beliefs. Once, 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 we, once we break you from your beliefs, man, you ain't going to give a fuck what she talking about. I hear you, mama. I'm gone. Now you wipe his ass because I'm out. Thank you. Yeah. Like, and, and he still be trying to like pop up and say some shit like you would think he would be like fucking humble and quiet and shut the fuck up. Be a chill mom. I love you. I appreciate you every day. Because it's real. It's, I mean, I'm not out there, you know, doing the most. You see what I'm saying? I'm not doing none of that stuff. I'm sitting in the same fucking spot with your ass. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So be nice to this fucking process. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't even talk. Like, this dude, he'll just wait for any little thing so he can jump and say something. Like that's what that's what makes you feel manly because you get to like jump and pop off and say you got shit. Well, you got to understand. You got to understand. Like this, and that's when you be feeling like you got a voice when it's when it's something negative. But you got to understand something. That you you say he's just forty in his forties. Yeah, forty four. Right. Okay. This dude feels like his manhood has been completely shattered. Because he's incapable at 44. So he is trying to hang on to any bit of dignity that he has left. And he, he's showing that through aggression, through trying to, to exert dominance in a verbal way. Because he can't do it in a physical way. You got to understand. He... This ain't got nothing to do with you. This has everything to do with him self-loathing and deteriorating. And his problem ain't your motherfucking problem. Dete that, that, that's, that's his life, right? 
You don't owe right. you don't owe him your life. Men marry because they want women that they can use. Period. Ain't no such thing as holy. Marriage is not holy. Marriage is not of God. Marriage is control for women and a gift for men to shut them up and pacify them so that they don't overthrow or cause or, 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 or create more chaos because they have access to women. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are a tool to use. It ain't holy. Right. It's a control mechanism. But the, the, the truth shall set you free. God damn it. Oh, there is truth in all of this ancient wisdom that has been promoted for years and years and years and centuries and centuries. The truth shall set you free. You got to know the truth about marriage being a wife yeah. you have to it's know the fun. truth about male psychology male behavior and their intentions the truth will set you free and you know what you right because i met we met in college i was 20 he was 24 we've been together for the last 20 years mm -hmm. and i wish i had more experience to understand that you know just because he's your first don't mean he has to be your only right and I wish I knew that because you think you're being a good girl. You think you're being a good woman. You're staying with the same man for the last 20 years, the same person that took your virginity. So fucking what? Mm -hmm. There's no shame in understanding men, learning men, dating men, you know, and enjoying your own sexual desires. Like, why is there so much shame on that that you praising this chick that's been trapped for the last 20 fucking years and still standing in the same spot? Mm -hmm. next, to a, next to a dude for what there's yeah. no growth and it's the truth this nigga had to this how I knew he was fucked up and I was wondering if it was a goddamn mess this nigga was watching Samuel shit one time he was doing what this nigga had to, was watching Kim, Kevin Samuel shit at one point yeah yeah, yeah. Any, any dude and I fucking I fucking ripped that phone out of his hand and I damn near broke it because he had the nerve to ask me, yeah, oh, so what do you bring to the table? Him and his fucking state, the audacity, had the nerve to ask me that. And you sitting up here wiping his ass and shit now. Okay, I, yeah, you're right. I don't bring, you I don't bring, to, yeah, I don't bring to the table. fucking disabled state, ask me what I fucking bring to the table after 20 years. And I just, I could have, I could have attacked him. I felt it. Because now it's no more like in a loving space that I'm, I'm in with him. No. It's I see you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you just want to know how much more you can drain from me. What are you talking about when I bring to the table? The fuck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right now you got a motherfucking thrift store table. It's all scratched up. It's all dusty. The legs is all chewed up by the previous old dog. The shit is raggedy. Mm -hmm. And I've been holding on to it because that table used to be polished. It used to be made from fucking oak. It used to shine in the sunlight. And it don't. It don't no more. And you know, to ask me, I'm telling you, if the fucking shit wasn't a felony, I would fucking push him in a pool. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, you have every right to feel like that. You do, right? Because <laughs> right now you just venting and you live. You remember that, that, that scene from a diary black woman? Remember when she was treating him bad and stuff? Yeah. And I feel that. I feel it. I feel it. Right. Well, you I can, feel it. Right. Well, you. here's the thing. There's a purpose for emotions. Emotions are a tool that you can use to catapult you to action. Do not sit in the emotion Allow that emotion to push you to do something about your problem, right? Ooh, it's good. Rich. It's it, it's good that you feel like that because now you have right. the power that you need to take massive action. And I'm telling you what a mm -hmm. massive action needs to be. You need to let me help you. It's just that simple, right? But don't yeah. fester in it, okay? Don't fester in it. It is what it is. Use that energy to catapult you to massive action. I'm going to write that down. I feel like that's my quote for September. Use that energy to catapult it into action. 
Mm-hmm. You're right. Right. You're so, right. so let me help you. If you really want, here's the thing. <coughs> if you stay and you don't take action, it's because you ain't that mad. You're not mad enough. You're not done enough. Right. Right. I don't kill those 60 days in my mind. I'm so fucking done. All right. Well, we're going to get this daggum workshop up and running. I might do one uh, next Sunday. Right. I might do my first workshop and just do it for Sunday so that people who want to be a part, who want to see this, who have not seen it, can sign up and do it. Right. And I'll do it. next. And it's in the Internet, right? It, yeah, yeah it's going to be it's going to be uh, held on Zoom. Right. And this is a, a workshop that I used to do on TikTok um, for donations and shit like that. But TikTok banned me and I don't want to go back to TikTok, really. I just lost all interest in fucking with TikTok. So instead, I'm just going to turn what I did there into a workshop that I will do on Sundays. So what I will do specifically because you called because I wasn't going to. Push the, the. I was not going to push the workshop until I moved into my next apartment, which was probably going to be next month. But I'm going to go ahead and set up one workshop for next Sunday. And I'll put the registration out so that anybody who wants to be a part and see this workshop and watch me break down the five components of love in a way that you have never seen it broken down before. This workshop has changed people's lives who saw me one and two times on TikTok. A lot of the people that saw me on TikTok came over here because of that workshop, right? So Mm -hmm. that is the beginning of breaking your mind from that because here's the thing, I free women in six different ways, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, Physically, financially, and sexually. When you are free See, in those I'm six saying, you know, I'm at. <laughs> Yeah. When you free in them six areas, you are a force to be fucking reckoned with. But it all begins with the mind first. And people don't tell you, they tell you to change your mind, but they don't tell you how to change it, and they don't tell you wow. what to change it to. They tell you to love yourself, but then they don't tell you how to love yourself. I got every answer for yeah. women that you ever would ask i got all the answers and it was because the universe trained me and gave them to me to give to y'all i appreciate it all right i appreciate it oh my goodness thank Mm -hmm. you you're giving me hope you need it like a church (laughs) <laughs> and like all the women we just come there like every Sunday, women only. I swear, because you give me pastor vibes. <laughs> that that's why they call me that's why they call me Pastor P. People in tick to people well, on t- that was following it. me on TikTok, they call me Pastor P. That's really what they call me. Right? Mm-hmm. Pastor P the Queen Maker. Uh, I don't, uh, Sophia, I don't know what time I'm gonna set the workshop up for, but since I'll be off on Sundays, yes. I can set it up for 12. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get with my assistant. We're going to work and figure this thing out. And I'm going to have it ready for y'all to register this week. And it's, it's you'll be able to register all the way up until Saturday. Right. Um, so we can have this. And I promise you, you'll never. I promise you when you when you finish when I finish this web workshop. You ain't going to never look at love and you ain't never going to look at men the same. I promise you. I know. (laughs) I was so young with him. And like now I turned 40. It's like the first 20 years is just like a blur. Like I was just walking, like not aware, like, you know, Mm -hmm. just there. And it's like now I want to be present. I need to be out of this depression and I need to like really reform and change. I want to actually enjoy the rest of my life. And you now I can't make excuses no more. The first 20, you got that. You're fine, but I don't want you to have no more years. Right. I don't. That's absolutely right. He don't, he don't deserve no more. He didn't deserve the first 20. Right. right? He right. didn't deserve right. And then you, you find you say, see, it was all of that. It was all of that just on this one individual. Like, come on. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Ladies. Please don't judge me, but... No, ain't nobody judging you here. 40. I just want this to be this next thing. I want it to be my life. 
Baby, that's I mean, how a queen like, thinks. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's how a queen think. It's about you, mama. It's your world, right? You ain't going to be judged right. amongst some queens. Shit, that's our motto here. Lead them motherfuckers, right? Tell you, girl, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so motherfucking petty, right? Since he was listening to Kevin Samuels, man, I will go play everything. I will go get, I will go get him a passport. I will fill out a passport for application for him. And ra- I'm telling you, I will put it in a nice box, wrap it up, and I will give him a video. I give him the video before he opened it. No, after he opened it. I'm going to let him open the passport. Then you're going to give him a, 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 a video and watch this and just and have it, have it, have it done nicely too. Have it edited nicely and everything. Like happy birthday, congratulations, whatever, all that shit. And then let the video transition into um where the dude, the black dude, went to the Philippines to get a woman and had a stroke and, and was oh paralyzed. And let him and yes. I say, baby, congratulations. Yes. You got the passport yes. and you got the ability yes. to go to the Philippines and get you a bitch to take care of you because I'm out. Yeah. I'm that type of bitch. I'm going to make you hurt. I'm going to make you bleed. Yes. Do you know how many men felt like they've had voices since him and these other losers are popping up? Mm-hmm. And this fucking me boy feel the same way. I be like, what? Mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rock your shit right now, Pastor P, because you gonna be like, oh, bring, come to the altar, okay? Because you're right here with the audacity. Why he told me he wanted a fucking divorce? Right. And he was a fucking prize and the catch, but he knew that affected me. He knew that would hurt my feelings, and I cried and stuff like that. Because I'm like, how could you be in the position you in? And you still could be a dickhead. You see what I'm saying? Like the fucking audacity. Girl, girl make a girl. Listen, when I free you, you better make that motherfucker cry. Somebody said, uh, let him know that winter is coming for him. Girl, let me tell you something what I would do. Okay. Hey, hey, look, let me tell you what I would do in int- intentionally with it. I will go get some motherfuckers to decorate the whole motherfucking house in like with snowmen and shit and have fake. I promise you, have fake snow and everything. Make that motherfucker think it's a party up in there, right? And then I I'll turn. That's why I don't even talk to the nigga. I turn the AC down. I turn that motherfucker AC down to 50 degrees with all that make it cold in that motherfucker. And he say, why is it so cold in it? I think winter then came. I don't know why it's cold. I exactly. Know. Yeah. Yeah, I make that exactly. motherfucker bleed. <laughs> he feel like even like at his day he was a bride. Like he, he felt that way. And I'm like, What? <laughs> you need to stop watching that shit. You don't never fucking watch shit for MS and learn and shit. Mm-hmm. Montel Williams look good as fuck, okay? Mm-hmm. With MS. With his call check where I had ass. There's other people with MS. This didn't want to just fucking lay there and die. Right. <laughs> Let him, baby. Yeah, do what you want. Easier. And you want to watch fucking toxic YouTube? You're not even looking at shit to inspire you. Put on some Joel Osteen. I don't know. But it, I be like, he's a fucking meatball. Like, like I don't even. You know, I'm telling you, like we really don't even talk. Like we just pass him by and shit. Mm-hmm. Baby, you got to knock the delusion out them motherfuckers. You got to, because they, they live in a delusional world. Bring that motherfucker to the real world. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you, baby. I'm going to turn that motherfucking AC down to 50 degrees, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm going to give you that motherfucking passport in a nice little nice box. I might even get, I might have them put Lambo on that motherfucker. I might put it in a, a, a okay, custom, custom wood box. Okay, you know that box. American dollar stretch over there. Oh, they yeah. They be feeling real big. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get, yeah. And give them, yeah, that's right, Give him forty dollars. Get that nigga forty dollars and say, "Go buy all the pussy you want if you can get over there, sir. If you can walk your ass out this bed and get over there, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You will want the pussy now, won't you? Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I make that nigga hate me. I make that nigga hate, hate me. <laughs> Bitch, you gonna be calling I mean, me in the book? That's right, hate me, nigga. <laughs> 
you know what? That's going to give me my stress. I, I, I accept that because you know what? I, I was hanging on to the residual love that's in the space. Mm-hmm. You know, the fucking gritty pieces. You know, the ones that just make noise when it goes around. It's like, <laughs> I was hanging on to that. Like, uh, I'm just so fucking done. It's, yeah. <laughs> Lucky we don't have a fucking pool in the backyard. <laughs> Who are you? Ooh. I can't wait. I can't wait to the show. It's start, when people start watching the show tomorrow and the day after. And I can't wait for the men to be. This is bitter women. These are just bitter women you chose. Uh, I can't wait to see them. Yes, I sir. Am. Yes, sir. When are they came? Yeah. Come get your boy. Come get him. Exactly. Yeah. That nigga in a wheelchair. Oh, Come God. roll his ass out. That's what I'm saying because he he don't got no smoke for his friends that don't come through on the come through. Yeah. And he be having all the smoke towards me. I be like, it's funny. You you know, your friends stand you up, you're okay with it. Shit don't go your way around here. I got a motherfucker here in your mouth. Why you don't hold these guys to stay accountable as you hold me? Mm-hmm. You only got shit to say. Exactly. So mm-hmm. shut up. Hey, look, girl. When you when I'm finished with you, you're gonna be talking like me too. And I want to make you better turn that goddamn AC down to fifty. I want I, fifty. Make that nigga cold. Why it's so cold? No, I want to see the fucking frost on his back. Yes. Nah. Come I here. Want, I want to see it. Cause you know how he gonna do, motherfucker. Bitch. <laughs> bitch, why is it so cold in here? Yeah, call me another bitch. I'm going to turn it down another two degrees. Huh? I'm what? Yeah. I'm going to keep turning and, down. And you don't can't... put no socks on his feet. Yeah. Man. Don't put no socks on his feet. <laughs> baby, can you? Baby, I'm sorry. I'm in the bathroom. Can you get up and go turn the heat up? I can't. Oh, I my bad. I'm on the toilet. <laughs> I had to go get make that nigga freeze. I think winter then came. Yeah, I don't know. It, exactly. I think winter came. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. That's right. I hope you feel better. I hope I made you laugh. Make sure you go to Prince of the Queen dot com and let me change your mind, girl. <laughs> All right, congregation churches on Sunday. Who gonna be there besides me? Front row. I'm the usher at the door. Let's get in here, ladies. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Thank you. I hope you have a good night. Right. Thank you. <laughs> good night. All right. <laughs> yes, indeed, baby. <laughs> no more crying over here, y'all. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm finna give you your power back. Unknown call. All of it. Hello, who am I speaking with? Hello? Hey, how you doing? Oh my gosh, I got you. All right, hold on. Let me pull over to the side. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I said, Lieutenant Dan. All right. <laughs> hey, hi. yes, how you doing? Hey, and I'm calling from Los Angeles, Priscilla. I just love you so much. I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. <laughs> you are so amazing. And um, I was planning on calling anyways, but what that girl has said, like I got so much energy in me right now. Uh, that was so triggering. So I've been through that. Mm-hmm. And, and I was married to a guy and, you know, it was fluff, fluff, fluff. And then. He moved to my hometown in New York, and he his back went out, and I felt bad for him. And then I was that whole thing of like, oh, would I want someone to leave me at the same time, and blah, blah, blah. And then he turned into an alcoholic, but he was already an alcoholic, but I didn't know that. And, like, my mom had that old school training of, you know, stick with your man, and my father was abusive, so that whole situation, and I'm there, and I I was so cut off. Even my intuition was like, you know, just leave, but I stuck around, and I even ended up moving to the country later on. Actually leaving completely, but give myself... Hello? I think you're breaking up a little bit. Hello? Hello? Yep, you was breaking up a little bit. We missed some of what you were saying. 
All right. Um, so I moved to, to Europe where he's originally from. Mm -hmm. And it just got even worse from there. And I just kept on having that, like, you know, to take care of him, et cetera, and the family and my family saying, you know, be there to. But eventually, um, one of his actual friends was just like, he's a piece of shit, and, you know, you should go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, I, I started exercising because I knew I had to build my mind up. And then I went, and uh, I was a counselor, but and I left that because of the whole situation with him. I couldn't, you know, I'm not that type of person to, like, preach one thing but live that same thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I even left that field because I just felt like I wasn't being true to, like, myself or, you know, not even in a position to give advice to somebody when I'm not, you know, living my own authentic self. So... Like, I left. Eventually, you know, I gained the strength back. You know, I went and I seeked help. And and it was tough, you know, to go against the family and stuff like that. But, you know, once you make up your mind and everybody knows that your mind is made up, mm -hmm. they can't, like, they won't even try you. You know what I mean? Like, they, they know whatever they say. It, it doesn't even matter. So, like, you know, I can't give that lady advice or anything, but I would say, you know, I would leave. <laughs> like, I would leave. I would, like, straight up just freaking leave. Like, don't even wait. It's your, it's your life. It's your time. You know, th this is your time, you know. And we know men wouldn't do it for, for women. We've seen that, like, so many times over and over and over again. So I'm glad for that. But that's not the reason why I was calling. So... After that, whatever, it was a long time. I stayed single to myself. I got into religion, that, and then it went into spirituality, and then ended up moving to California. So then eventually I got into a relationship after, like, eight years of being, like, single or dating but not taking men serious at, at a point I really hated men. You know, and then I wanted to get back to my feminine energy. Mm -hmm. So then I went back into feminine energy, but it was like feminine patriar pa patriarchy, you know, type of thought of still having the man at like the head in my mind for some reason. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. would interfere with like my goals and like, um, my my sacral chakra, you know, like my root, my foundation or my purpose or, you know, my call, whatever, you know what I mean? And I'm always like trying to figure out my career or my path, even though I kind of had an idea. But for some reason, the man was always on top of my like list of things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that would like, it was like a distorted view of myself and my vision for who I am and what I have to offer. And um, then uh, we got into a relationship and, you know, pursuing me for, like, several months before I gave him a chance. We were part of the same, like, dance community, mm -hmm. and we bumped into each other two times outside of that. And then eventually, and, you know, I live in L.A., and there's a lot of fluff here, and, you know, he was wealthy, and what happened was that he, you know, tried to, like, turn me out, you know, pretty much just, you know, just suck all my energy and everything. And I just wondered, like, how did I get back at this same place, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, how? Mm -hmm. And I know about psychology and programming and the subconscious mind and, and patterns and, you know, all of that things. And I'm just, like was so upset like what what is the the link you know what linked me to this guy what allowed me to still you know uh continue when i did see some flags you know what i mean like what was there because he even though he was successful um he was still drawing energy from me like he needed it you know what i mean and mm -hmm. you, it was evident mm -hmm. you know and like he was trying to suck as much as he could you know right but whatever, yeah. it got to the point where he got abusive, and then my neighbors called the cops. Now, I live in Beverly Hills, and I'm a melanated woman. You know what I mean? I was raised in the hood, so it took a lot of effort for me to get there in the first place, just mine, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, wow, like, you know, I find myself here, and a man is trying, you know, 
to destroy what I've built for myself out of my own vision, you know? Right. And I, I was very embarrassed. And, you know, because not, obviously not many melanated people in, in the area in the first place. So it's just like I'm here just like embarrassed at, at myself. And, and I was just like in a, in a really tough spot. And I prayed, you know, and meditated. And it took me about like two, a month and a half. And then I came across your TikTok. And let me tell you. I knew when I heard your voice and what you were saying because I, I just knew, you know. I knew that you had something for me, that you had something that was going to uh, unlock something for me, something that never been unlocked before. And so I, uh, you know, I, just, I was just hooked, you know, and I know when I'm hooked on something, I know it, it's, there's something there for me, and there's an answer that's going to, you know, I'm going to be released from something. And every time I heard, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, you know, when I heard about your book, you know, immediately I ordered it, you know. I went on, <laughs> I went on Amazon because I was like, yeah, I knew you didn't have it, so I got it on Amazon. And I, I got it and I ordered it. And it came to my home, and I read it in, like, two days, mm -hmm. like, one, a half a day, and then, like, the next day, walking on a track, and I just felt so released, especially at the, the end, the last few chapters, I just felt like like something, like, weights coming off me, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it was just so powerful. I was just like, wow, you know, because I'm so sensitive to energy and how I feel and, and what was going through my body and how I feel about it, and especially with the forgiveness and everything. So I'm just so thankful for you because now, you know, it's still like I'm, I see now, you know, what it is, but then, obviously, because I had this program, you know, operating for so damn long, I'm 39 years old, you know, that it's going to take, you know, a little bit more than a month and a half or two months mm -hmm. to, like, really, you know, you know, free myself completely. Right. But at least I know I see a vision, I have a map, and I know when there's, like, the default starts to come back in. I know, okay, this is a default program, take a minute breathe for a second mm -hmm. and know like you're not there no more you know what I mean like right. you don't have those same beliefs no more and so I am like you are the only one that is spitting this knowledge out you know so like and yeah you got to go through some crap to come out with what you got you know what I mean and I'm just like I'm so thankful for you I'm so hopeful for the younger women you know what I mean because I have a niece and when she and she's like 17 years old, but like three years prior, she was starting to pick up those same habits that, you know, my mother, my sister, and me had. And they wasn't saying nothing, and I was in another state. And somehow I came across her phone, and I seen a boy had said something to her that wasn't right. And then she, you know, she, you know, she was smiling a little bit, and I stopped her, my mom, and my sister. And I said, listen, my mom messed up. Your mom messed up, I messed up, and we're going to stop that right here. And, like, we, for some, somehow, that conversation shifted her, and now she has found, like, you know, not only herself, and she's, you know, running shop, but she's in a healthier relationship that, you know, our or family that we know of have ever experienced and so I'm thankful for that but it took me to stop her instead of like my mom or you know my sister and so there's still you know women out there young women that have these you know older you know relatives that they look up to that will say you know oh but he's a good man or he has a good job like Nah, nah, no, 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 <laughs> no. So yes. I appreciate you, and I, I'm so glad that I, I found you through TikTok, and I know, like, every going to find you, you know, every woman at their time or whatever, they are going to see you. I've already, you know, shared your information to the women that I know that, you know, fall in the same categories as, as I have and are, are filling this. So I just wanted you to know that, and I'm praying 
for you and your family and stuff like that because like even your your first page and the dedication to your mom like that that was even deep because I feel like that with my mom and so I just want to say those need to get that book don't even waste your time now read like yo just try to read it as fast as you can because it's just it got a lot of gems in there and it'll just it'll just make you stronger um and 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 build that foundation of like who you of just of you you know we all just have to be you we were uniquely de designed to be us unique and i feel like you know, you have set that free for women, and you've done it for yourself, and you've done it for other women. You've definitely done it for me, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate every word that you said. I hope you have a great night and stick around, call back, uh, and any other show that you want to call in. Oh, for sure. Thank you for the <laughs> Thank you. You have a good night. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Who was that calling? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take uh three more calls. So let's not uh let's let's uh be respectful for everybody's time because it's already twelve twenty. I know it's the weekend, but I don't wanna I don't when people go back and watch this, I don't want it to be like long, long like that, because I'm gonna do another one tomorrow. So um let's let's take three more callers and let's keep them uh short, okay? Um here we go. Um, okay, my phone is malfunctioning. I got to reset it. Give me a second. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I didn't think the phone, I didn't think that was going to come through because it wasn't dialing. Ms. Prince. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and Shirley again, Shirley Stewart. Yes, uh, I just, I just wanted to, uh, uh God, I was in there. Um, yeah. uh, I wanted to share something um, about your book, the, the Five Components of Love, which I've, I have read that book. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to, oh, I know it was a lady who had called about her husband. I think he was disabled. Okay, so I wanted to share this. So my mom, um, uh, back 15 years ago, she was married, she got married, and her husband, which is my stepdad, had a stroke, and he had, I think it went into dementia, mm -hmm. and then um, one day he was over there, and I was over with my mom, and I said, to my and I said, okay, if my mom was the one who had dementia, or had a stroke, would you still, would you still be with my mom? And he never could answer the question. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I put in the chat, that be careful what you sign up for. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that's one. The other thing is I wanted to share with the five components your book that you wrote. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to just say that the questions that I asked throughout my life, not just relationships building with uh, uh, with men, but just in life general, is I asked myself the six questions. Why, how, what, when, and where, and should. Mm -hmm. And why would be my end result? And how is is going to be executed and what am I really trying to do and then when when I'm going to make it happen and where do I start and should I do this which is very important because should I get involved or whatever I'm going to do in my life mm -hmm. but that's all I wanted to share um, about the um, the woman who called about her husband being disabled um, there's a lot of stories where men have gotten sick and women have taken um, women have gotten sick and, and the men end up leaving Mm -hmm. or something going haywire. So, anyway, thank you very much, Priscilla. Thank you, Miss Shirley. All right. You have a good night. <laughs> All right. Next caller. Two more callers. Then we're going to call it a night. Tonight was, tonight was great. Most of, mo most of this show was callers. <laughs> Unknown call. Oh, most of this show was just phone calls. <laughs> Oh, uh, call back. What happened? I don't know what happened. Hello? Hey, Priscilla. Yes, ma'am. How you doing? I'm good. It's Nevada. Hey, Nevada. All right. <laughs> what, you, what you got for me? <laughs> so, I've been sitting over here just kind of like, I, I couldn't figure out for myself 
like why I got upset. But then it dawned on me with your guest. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like my armpit just started sweating right now, thinking about like, I want to swing on him. Mm -hmm. And he triggered me because it was like he came on the show paper way thin with whatever he was going to attempt to try to do it was basically playing in our face mm -hmm. and it just reminded me you know you know a little bit of the situation about my ex i just broke up with we went to the vacation and everything mm-hmm and as we were even trying to have a conversation, or I guess I was trying to have a conversation, he kept going off into, yeah, we got to do this bigger and better next time. And I'm looking at him like, nigga, you, your brain really thinks like this? Like you're sitting there and I'm sitting here and we're talking, I guess, but you talking about doing bigger and better vacations next time. Mm -hmm. It is literally like you are not hearing me that whatever you think this is about to get left in Costa Rica. Right. Like, are you serious right now? Well, he did that because that was a manipulation tactic because he he's basically calling your bluff. You, he thinks that you're calling a bluff. And so he wants to make you feel like um, he's more invested by showering you with the idea of showering you with more quote unquote vacations and stuff. It's a manipulation tactic. It's a game, right? And so, because right, right. he thinks that that would make you stay, right? Uh, right. Man, these dudes don't have nothing, a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out most of the time. <laughs> and the crumbs that they actually have ain't nothing but manipulation tactics. That's all, right? Right. And, and so, yeah, go when ahead. he asked me flat out, well, you think you could see yourself marrying me? And I said, no. No, I can't. Mm -hmm. And he's got quiet for a good long time. And I, I know I shared with you, there was tears on the trip and they weren't mine. <laughs> he tried to, he tried to cry in tactics. Oh, you made me a better man for my sons and blah, blah, blah. Motherfucker tried that shit on me too. Right? <laughs> when, he was, when he was trying to scam me out of some money and the motherfucking shit backfired on him. Gonna call my phone, talk about I just wanted to let you know you know you a good woman. You you make you make a man a better man, right? I just wanted to call you, let you know you look like your you look just like your mama. Anything to act like we closer than what the fuck we are. Unknown caller. Yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> But, yeah, it just walked off. Yeah, uh, but it, anything to make it seem like we closer than what we are, it, it, just the game play, right? Right. I, you know what I mean? And they all do that shit. Like, you remember, y'all, you, you was on TikTok. You, you found me on TikTok. You remember the story mm -hmm. that I told you with, with, with my, uh, my te uh, orthodontics technician? Yes, she, yes. This motherfucker go tell her that... <laughs> The reason that he, he was cheating, that he got raped by a man, at the, the, he got raped by the fucking bouncer, <laughs> and he just was trying to get, trying to uh, see, get his manhood back. So that's why he was cheating. <laughs> oh, and then he gonna God. tell the chick that he was cheating with that he had cancer, but he ain't had no cancer. I like the same thing, anything. But <laughs> well, yeah, it's so it's just like the way it all came out night in the charlatan that this pastor was being he had nothing to stand on i don't know why he was I was, and that pissed me off too because it was like the biggest waste of time like i was so excited kind of for this and it was like when they ejaculate too fast like what is going on here like why why did you show up here like what do you what did Man, he want? These like Mike Tyson yeah. fights, cause you know people used to get tired of going to see Mike Tyson, cause that motherfucker knock him <laughs> right. out in twenty seconds, and it ain't even no goddamn right. fight. <laughs> right, and so I think that's what, what it really triggered me and upset me, because you know the same dude a year ago, his his uh, hernia erupted, 
calling me, baby, I'm hurting. Had to go to emergency room, emergency surgery. I jumped up and drive to Alabama. I had a procedure, and when he dropped me off at home, he stayed here less than ten minutes. Like it, 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 it just—it was sickening to me. Tonight, caught like that dude was the epitome of how a, a a dude will play in your face and really be trying to make you feel like he's doing something. Mm-hmm. And it, it just irked me. I, I just would like if he was if we if you had had a live studio audience, I probably would have ran up on the stage and punched him. <laughs> he just he just pissed me off so so bad. But I'm I'm glad it was an, another example for everybody to see that they are incapable. He mm-hmm. took all your words and tried to twist them around. Mm-hmm. He even tried to insinuate we a group of down low women. <laughs> you heard that right? Man, I wouldn't. I ain't gonna lie to you. I wouldn't hear shit that motherfucker was saying because I knew it was all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't saying shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they all yeah. say the same shit, so I already know how to respond. Like as soon as a word come out their mouth, all, the whole sentence come in my head before they even finish the shit. So it was, uh, okay. yeah. So you know, half that shit, half that shit. Like I, like I tell you, like I said at the beginning. I don't give a fuck what they talking about. The only right. reason that they here is to try to pr- disprove. If you ain't coming with no facts to disprove what I'm right. fucking, I ain't got, I ain't hearing shit you saying. Because it's right. bullshit. Right. You ain't did no research, nothing. That's why he ain't want to hear me reading the motherfucking stats. You see how, he, right. and you see how quiet he got with the motherfucker. As soon as I said that shit, that red stat number eight, <laughs> that was it. That was the nail was in the it. coffin. That was it. He wasn't trying to then, shit. He, exactly. He ended it right then and there. Mm-hmm. He was. He could not accept patriarchy, but he could believe that feminism was about hate and men. Right. No, like what? Only a privileged person would be upset about someone else wanting equal rights to you. Right. And that's why when that's he said feminism, well, that's when right. he said feminism. I said, no, no, sir. No, sir, because see, now you're saying, if you're saying feminism is the cause of this, you're saying that women shouldn't be free. Let me go back to stat number eight. You wanted, you wanted to, you, you, you wish, you wish 1960 was still here, right? Mm-hmm. Because feminism was about women getting equal rights. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, I ain't going to hold you up. I just was sitting here and I know you kept saying, somebody called, somebody called. I was like, but I, I want to hold it for everybody else because, you know, I'm a mod and I can hold back. Mm-hmm. But I just was like, I he or, he just he pissed me off, like to no end mm-hmm. tonight. That's all I had to say. Wow! And, and, and it's made it so much more clear that they are incapable, and like I can't even get myself to even be like, oh, I want to go date one of them. It, it's like, ugh, mm-hmm. no, I'm okay. And I tell you, all my six areas are coming along, and I just want to say thank you. So, okay, well, thank you so it's much, great. Nevada. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, well, you have a good yeah. night. You too. All Bye-bye. right. All right. One last caller. If you ain't got the, if you don't have the five components of love book, you need to get it. All right. You're hearing all these people come up here and tell you how powerful this book is. You need to get the book. But not only do you need to get the book, when we put, when we get this workshop set up. Make sure you sign up for the workshop. It's going to be on Sunday. All right. Hello, who am I speaking with? Chris Taylor. <laughs> who is this? This, this is uh, Kristen Lee. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Um, I'm looking at YouTube. It must be falling a little bit behind because I, I was still listening to you talking. <laughs> um... So I just want to share my story real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, So my resentment uh, pretty much comes, well, it's toward like, you know, my family, Mm -hmm. which, you know, I'm still working on that. But long story short, I was a young girl, you know, just, um, I was at the gas station. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with my sister mm-hmm. and um, some guys came up to the car asked her for her number and another guy came around the window asking for my number mm-hmm. I felt like my sister 
shut that down. Like, okay, she's 16. Can't be asking her for her number. Mm-hmm. You know, but it is what it is. So one of my first, the, the worst experiences that I've had with a man was um, this one light-skinned, genuine-looking nigga. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, oh, he's cute. Like, whatever, I guess. I don't know if people would say, oh, I was being fast or whatever, but I came from a very religious household, so it was like, okay, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so the guy calls me, we talk on the phone for hours. He's like, oh, I want to take you out to dinner, all this stuff. So um, he picks me up and he takes me to a motel room. Um, and I'm like, oh, what happened to dinner? This is just to let the ladies know how fucked up these men are. <laughs> so, um, we go to a motel room, and I, when we get there, I'm relieved. I'm like, oh, my God, there's women. There there were people there. Even though it was a motel, it was a fucked up situation to begin with. But um, there were women, there were a few ladies there, and there were men there, too. Mm-hmm. And everybody was just chilling, playing card games, drinking, whatever. Mind you, I am a minor. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um, they they were like, oh, let's play this game called Questions. Mm-hmm. So, they proceeded to play this game called Questions. Which, if you, um, I, I don't really remember how it went. If you don't answer the question quick enough or if you have the wrong answer. You basically have to drink. Mm -hmm. So, (laughs) um, they're like, this dude that I came with, he's feeding me like drinks, like hard liquor. Like, I'm like, I've never, you know, um, (laughs) drank before. Mm -hmm. So, I get fucked up. I immediately start throwing up. And the girls there, they were like, oh, holding my hair. Like, oh, you know, da, da. they was like, take her and put her in the shower in cold water. And um, she'll wake up. Mm-hmm. Hello? Oh, you yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, the long story short, <laughs> the dude takes me in the bathroom. And um, instead of getting in the shower, waking up, he props me up on the toilet, pulls down my pants, and, you know, does this thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm, like, unconscious, but I can still kind of, like, tell what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know? So... At this point, um, when I come out the bathroom, I just noticed everybody was going, <laughs> mm. Ex- except for him and another and another guy. I guess was his cousin or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, so they proceed to um, have sex with me and stuff. So, um, me, I'm 16. I really don't know, like, what's going on. Um, like, I don't know. I didn't really have, like, um, people to tell me, like, what, what, what are you supposed to do mm-hmm. when you hang out with guys, stuff like that. So, for me, I knew it wasn't right. Like, okay, like, this is a fucked up shit. Like, this wasn't supposed to turn out like this tonight. Mm -hmm. So, next thing I know, I end up pregnant. Um, I end up pregnant. Long story short, got pregnant with, um, my rapist with, um, I got pregnant by him. So, um, my family, like, was really religious. They were like, oh, no, you're not having an abortion. We're going to take care of this baby. They didn't believe shit I said. I said, this is 
<laughs> do right to me. He didn't listen to shit I said. And I really find, like, to this day, as a grown woman, six years old, like, I have all this resentment inside of me. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I love my son to death because he was innocent in all of this. But they wouldn't let me have an abortion. They had plenty of money to, you know, let me do that. Mm -hmm. But they were like, oh, no. Um, we're going to take care of this baby and da -da -da -da. you know I don't know just that old school bullshit like you know something happened to you you don't talk about it um, so um, since then I had like distanced myself like you know from my family kind of doing my own thing and taking care of my son mm -hmm. and um, at one point when I did kind of start talking back to my family my sister was like oh we, I want to babysit you know bring bring Chris over bring bring you know that's my son we call him Chris mm -hmm. bring him over and <laughs> not to mention they didn't believe me but you could literally Google this nigga. You know, they have like, uh, these different apps. You can do background checks on people. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know this till recently, but I looked him up like not like a few years ago and like he has rape charges. Like I was the first one. Wow. <laughs> wow. Right. So um, my sister was like, you know, when you bring in, you know, my nephew over, I want to see him, blah, 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 all this different stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, you'll take a load, you know, off of my plate because I'm working, I'm doing all kind of stuff. So I bring him over there and next thing I know, um, Prince Ellis, the whole time they had been communicating with my rapist. Wow. He was coming over there bringing them money and all type of shit that I didn't know about. Wow. Told them what happened to me. And um, when I brought him over there, um, next thing I know, he had basically took my son from my sister's house and served me paperwork that he was taking me to court for uh, uh, full custody. Oh my gosh. So, um, I went to court. He didn't get full custody. We got joint custody. But the whole situation, it really fucked me up. And I'm still trying to have a relationship. This is like years later. Still trying my best to have a relationship with, you know, my family. Like, you know, my, well, my, you know, my mother passed away, my grandmother passed away, but these were the people who told me to keep my son and wouldn't let me, you know, have an abortion. Oh, we're going to take care of this baby. They didn't want to listen to the right thing, whatever. Um, but my sisters, I felt like, you know, if I was, you know, if I had little sisters, I would look out for them. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, where where did y'all drop the ball? Did y'all let this nigga violate me like this? And then on top of that, you're talking to him behind my back on Facebook. And he's able to reach out to you guys. And he's bringing y'all money and uh, shit I didn't even know about. So the couple of dollars he was bringing y'all, that, that was worth y'all betraying me. I really do feel betrayed. And I'm trying to fix my relationship with my family that I have left, my sisters, everybody else has passed away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things have been good. Like, you know, um, af after that court situation happened, I was really fucked up. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. um, to the point where I was homeless. Um, I was an alcoholic. Um, I did I did some drugs. I was just really, it was really hard to sleep at night without my son and take the whole situation in. Um, it was really hard. Mm -hmm. So I did get back on my feet. 
Um, and I got my CPL. And um, I'm, I'm now I'm making about eighty thousand a year. Mm-hmm. I went, you know, not, you know, it's a big leap from where I was. So everybody's like, "Oh, we're so proud of you!" Everybody, you know, it's all in my face, shit like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I try my best to like hang out with them and reach out to them, and you know, um, <laughs> but. It's just, I can't, I, I know people always tell me, like, oh, you probably need therapy, you can do so much. But it's like, I really cannot get over the fact of, you know, of that tragic. <laughs> I felt like he tested the waters. Like, he felt like because I didn't call the police and nobody show, showed up to his doorstep, he tested the waters by talking to my sisters and, you know, playing with their head because they were so simple, they didn't realize it. Like, oh, okay, what what she tell you? What can I get away with? You know, so he started coming around. He saw what what they you know was really interested in was was it was just like money. But the cold part about it, like my sisters and shit, they was dabbling into like coke and like we're from L.A., so like coke, drugs, like they were fucked up. But I would rather you. I would call you to babysit. I had something to do if you were sober than let my son stay with a stranger. Long story short, Priscilla, like, I just, do I leave them alone completely? Because it's been so many years and I just can't get over. We got- I'm, the young, I'm the youngest sister and nobody ever taught me shit ever warn me about men nothing i was with you when this grown ass he was in his 20s he came in that window and asked me for my number and asked me to take me out i mean i'm not trying to place the blame on her but i feel like you know where was your where was you where was your ass tennis with this nigga who was way older than me was trying to get my number and it's like you know and all this should happen and nobody had my fucking back and it's like now they're fucked up they be calling me oh you know oh you know i need this or i need that or whatever and i'll still be looking out for them because i don't like to see my family fucked up well, you, you know, got, you got to have an obligation to yourself. <laughs> you, you got you got a lot. Of, you got a lot to work on. You got a lot to work on. But let me let me put you on pause for a minute. OK. Um, I say men are incapable of love because they cannot have empathy, understanding of anything. I'm going to tell y'all to block any dude coming in here trying to dissuade with that bullshit red pill rhetoric. King Kali, I'm about I'm about to ban you. All of this deflecting shit you can't say, the last the the least that your silly ass can say, King Kali, is I'm sorry. That you had to experience that. But no, what you come in here talking about? We ain't getting to the root of the problem. Who raised these men? This girl just sat up here and told you two dudes got her drunk and took advantage of her while she was unconscious. (laughs) And all you can come in here and say is that bullshit you talking about. Get the fuck out my goddamn room. You niggas, dis- you make me sick. You fucking disgusting. You make me fucking sick. This ain't up for debate, nigga. You motherfuckers are garbage. You trash. Get out of my motherfucking room. I'm not here for likes and popularity. I'm not here to debate. I don't give a fuck if I ever hear from you niggas. You will respect my guests. 
I don't want to hear your shit. If you can't respect and show some compassion and empathy for motherfuckers that you say don't exist, you always got to find a way to blame a woman. You can't take the motherfucking heat. Y'all egos are so bruised, you just don't want to see that y'all motherfuckers are degenerate. You fucking degenerate. And I'm making women very aware that this exists in the majority of you. Get out of my motherfucking room. I don't care if there's five people in here. I'm not here for popularity, sir. I'm here to make motherfucking change. And I do it one person at a goddamn time. These motherfuckers make me sick. All right. I'm sorry I had to interrupt for that. <laughs> no, it's no problem. <laughs> Oh, oh God! Is there anything else you want to say? Uh, I mean, I just really need some advice on how to move forward with my family, my sisters, being specific. You know, the way they treated the situation. My mom is not here no more. My grandmother is not here no more. It was kind of like a discussion like okay this is what happened to me I'm pregnant like I don't want to have this baby <laughs> you know mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I'm, I'm in high school at this point um, I feel like that situation ruined my life and um, even though from you know the grace of God my higher power <laughs> whatever you want to call it because I grew up in a Christian household I, I, I don't really know about you know Christianity but I, I can say I do believe in higher power um, I made it through all of that and came out you know I'm not going to say like you know I'm not like no female Bill Gates or nothing like that but I you know I, I'm good but it's like now everybody is like you know, gravitating to me and calling me with their shit and their problems and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, you don't know how much trauma. All right. <laughs> well, it's time for you to disconnect. Okay. All right. All right. You got you got a lot of work that you got to do. Okay. Uh. So. Yeah. Okay. So my qu my first question. Not, my not, not to uh, sorry to cut you off, Priscilla. Not to mention me having to deal with this dude going through court proceedings and all this shit me having to face the monster mm -hmm. <laughs> like for all of these years because of, of uh, yeah so okay so um my first question because you got a lot of work to do okay a lot mm -hmm. okay um my first question to you is one have you gotten a book five components of love yeah yeah, yeah. That. i, I, I I okay. You, did you get the workbook to go with it? No, but I, I, I will. You got to get the yeah. workbook because all of you, all of the things that you need help with, I've, I'm producing it all, right? With the workbook, you work the workbook and the course in tandem, right? You okay. get that and work through it, okay? Then you book a co a. a coaching call with me after you finish the book that book is going to take you really 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 deep right the workbook, the workbook is going to take you very deep right oh. the, the yeah. five components of love that's only going to make you aware that there are that love is five components but now you need to know how to turn that concept onto yourself right and how right. to start to free yourself right so in the workbook it gives you everything it gives you everything. You walk you through the whole process, but then you can get the course to go with it. The course ain't nothing but me walking you through the book and really going deeper into the book to make you understand what you're doing in the book. So I'll walk you hand in hand with every page in that book. Right. When you come out on the other side, you may have questions about certain things like how do you do you cut your family off and stuff like that. When you get to the end of the book and you still have questions like that, 
then that's what the coaching call is for so that we can that I can help you come up with a plan and help you reframe and put things in the correct perspective that will help you become whole right that's what the that's what the whole thing is about right so everything that's out there if y'all really want to help yourself the reality is you have to invest in all of this stuff everything that I done put out there I have done on myself over these uh, years that I've been on my own. I didn't learn none of this stuff from nowhere. I literally, the universe took me through all of the experience. So I've learned all of the techniques. I've experienced them on myself. Yes. Uh, and I put it all in the book <laughs> to, to literally take you through the process that I took myself through. And I know they work, right? Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's another reason why I really do follow, you know, what you talk about because you know for you to come from because I know that you've been through some you know unlikely situations as well not as, not as you know deep as what I've been through mm-hmm. but right. I know that you've been through some stuff too mm-hmm. and uh, yeah that's where most of your teachers come from is from experience mm-hmm. so I definitely do the only um, difference between me and and I since I didn't, I wouldn't, I, I went and got an abortion. I got raped too in 2016, right? And I got, an, I had to have an abortion from that. And then I had uh, two abortions from a dude that was uh, abusing me back in 2012, right? And it's right. some, it's some stuff that I, I haven't told people, you know. Um, and though some of these abortions that I had to have, and some of the things I haven't told people uh, or gone into detail about, I don't feel no kind of way about it, you know. I, you yeah. know. It's so it's yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Um, cause there, there's a lot to unpack over here and I'm not gonna I wanna be courteous and I, I know that I made the comment earlier. I I was like, I know that talking to all these people with all these different issues, I know it it, it could, you know, probably deplete you and take a toll on you It's only so much a person can take mm-hmm. in a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. Cause I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. Take me a quick. Like, take me a shower. Drink me some old whiskey and all of that, and take me a nap. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know. You know. This. I, this is my life purpose. This is what I was meant to do. So I'm. I, I got a lot of energy for this, right? Um, right. But it's like. What I do is real. Like it's not sensationalism. It's not band aids. What I do is very real. I can give you real time example, uh, uh, real time healing. I have wisdom and information to actually transform lives that even psychologists who got PhDs ain't got, right? So or therapists don't have, right? I'm just natural at this. So like I say, everything that I put out, right? y'all got to go y'all got to go to it because it's real it's not stuff that's just, it yeah it's it's, 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 not, yeah, not, yeah, it's not yeah it's not flip filler shit feels. it's not yeah. filler or fluff yeah right. i know it's not it's not copy and paste yeah none of that no, yeah trust me because i know people i'm very good with people mm-hmm. so yeah I, I knew that from the start when i first ran across your videos i was like oh my god this is different she is different. She is gifted. Mm-hmm. It's something about her. There is, you know, because you, you can you can filter out like who's on some, you know, uh, like this is not really, you know, this this is not authentic, right? Um, yeah. So when I ran across you, I, I can't even remember. I think I was. I actually remember the day. I was traveling through New Me- no, actually Arizona, going into California. I was on the uh, 40, mm-hmm. uh, 40 freeway. And I was like, I couldn't stop listening to you. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, she's so right. <laughs> Everything she's talking about, like, this is gold right here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so, yeah, Priscilla, I really get I'm sorry, I got a little emotional. <laughs> hey, a, that's what the space is for, right? Because here's the thing. The more people that come out and express the truth, your emotions are truth, right? Don't let nobody tell you that they weak and you ain't got to... Where you are is truth and it's pure. And only then when you can acknowledge where you at, 
can you now know where you're going, right? So exactly. this is going, this, the, there's power in expressing yourself truly because that is healing and that's going to attract other people to want to transform their lives. So it's necessary that you all come here and be real. Be real. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And Chris, oh, that was only one part of my story. Like, I've been through multiple um, relationships where there was domestic violence, abuse. I've been, you know, uh, this is, n- you know, not that what I went through at a young age wasn't enough. Like, I, I've, I've been, been going through this shit since, um, since then. Like, you know, and I, I finally decided I'm like you know what uh maybe I need to just take a break and and just stop sucking with these dudes because you know they put on their best uh representative Mm -hmm. (laughs) in the beginning of the relationship it's just like everything is cool you know they're the best person in the world they wind you and dine you and the next thing you know you in a relationship in a couple of years down the line or it might even be that long Mm-hmm. You waking up in the middle of the night, somebody trying to kill you or beat you up. Oh, yeah. um, so when you say about these dudes and the life of women, I, I was one of those women who was almost unalive. Mm-hmm. This, you know, that, that was just the beginning of my story. We could talk on and on and on all night about this shit, but I know you don't have the time. Oh no, I don't. Because right? it's, it's one o'clock now, so I got to <laughs> get ready to end it so I can go ahead and start working on the. On the, right. the workshop, so you know, I appreciate yes. your story, and I, I and I sympathize and I empathize with it. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate. And you. I appreciate you too, and I'm gonna let you go. So we'll talk again soon. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You have a good night. You too. All right. Bye. All right. I and, and I appreciate everyone who calls. I definitely appreciate everyone who calls, and and I know that a lot of you are are filled with with. Uh, emotions and feel with things that you want to say because I know that people don't hear you I know they don't listen and and when you call I know that 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 you know that I'm gonna listen right and you want to get out everything right I get it I get it right and I'm sympathetic to it right um but we do have to keep it controlled so that way we can have Get a lot of people to, um, you know, get everybody in, you know, uh, so that we don't have the shows going on, on and on. So, but I am sympathetic to, and and I appreciate everybody who comes in with a story, right? Because your stories are enriching, they're valuable, and they're going to free somebody and attract them to now begin to tell the truth because most people are out here wearing a mask pretending that they're happy when they know that they're not. They know that they're being emotionally abused. They know that they're being neglected. They know they're getting the short end of the stick, but they continue to try to uphold this illusion that patriarchy is trying to survive and hold on to, to, for them, and they know it ain't true. They know it ain't true. But when you come up here and tell your side of the story, ain't no man going to listen to you. They not. They not going to hear you. That's why I kicked King out of here. Because I'm sick of these dudes. You want to come into a woman's space and then uninvited, uninvited, and dismiss. I I will sever you. You ain't welcome here. See, I don't go to no other man's podcast. I don't care what y'all are doing. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to reason with you. I don't want to do nothing. But you want to come up in here and be dismissive. Nah. You soulless. But you want to come, you want to try to tell me men are capable of love. You ain't. You ain't, you, you, you're not. This space is for women. And the only reason that I want a man in here is for two reasons. The ones that I invite got some sense. And they not on that red pill bullshit. And the rest of you, 
you are here as sacrificial lambs for me to prove a point. Because I really ain't trying to hear nothing you got to say. I just want to give you the floor for everybody to see. That's all I want to do. You ain't here for me to listen to your cries. You're not here for me to care about what the fuck you talking about. I just want to show the world your psychosis. That's the only reason your ass is here. All right. I'm not taking no more calls tonight because we are already over the limit. What I'm going to do now is call out the people who sent me a cash app. I don't know if I can relook. I don't know if I can see who uh, sent me. Um, I don't know who, if I can see people who sent me uh, what's them things, some super chats. Um, once they disappear on this screen, I can't. I don't think I can pull them up. I will look. But let me shout out everybody who sent me a cash app. Again, your cash apps are to support the show and currently to help me move, right? Right, to support my moving fund to get from underneath Cruella and the 101 Dalmatians. Um, oh, just bull. Okay. All right. Let's see. When was that? Okay. We got Chosen Pre, $10 to the Cash App, Jupiter Jones, $5, Miss Peaches, $10, and Chiquita Bryant, $40. I think that's what came in. Uh, I'm on this old trash phone, so I don't know if that's everything. Uh, but if, if, it, if it's not, please forgive me because it's, 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 it's the raggedy phone. Um, let's see. Let's try my other one, make sure. See if everything came in. Okay, Alicia Andrews, $5, Raquel uh, Peel, $5, Farida, $20, Hazel Jones, $20, Stephanie Roberts, $50. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all the love and support. Uh, I'm about to get off of here, and we're going to start working on setting up the workshop for next Sunday. All right. So that gives you a week to register. OK, so I hope y'all have enjoyed tonight's show. I hope it was entertaining. I hope it was inspirational. I hope uh, it was emotional uh, and I hope you got something out of it. And until next time, we're going to do one again tomorrow. I got something that I want to say. So I'll see y'all later. Peace. <laughs>